The action happens right now on Mari. This man slept with his uncle's wife. I never accept your apology for what you did to me. Is Patrick or his uncle Wayne the father? <laughs> Dominique says her son is denied for one reason. His new girlfriend, Keisha. She's just mad because he's taking care of me and my son and not her child. But does his new girlfriend know he's been cheating? I've been with him a year. I just slept with him in June. So how was that? Oh. Did he father this baby? Steven. Oh! And this woman has no idea if her boyfriend or her boyfriend's stepbrother is the father. Jessica, you embarrassed? <laughs> Actually, a lot. What makes him think that he's a better man to take care of Evan than me? You had the right to be there, and you denied that right! Which brother is the father? Oh! Keith denies her son for one reason. He don't make boys, he make girls. Only make girls! You the ho! You the ho! No, you the ho! Well, anyway, here you are the father. Everyone, this is Dominique, and this is her ex boyfriend, Steven, and his new girlfriend, Keisha. Now, you see, see, Dominique doesn't know which of these two people she hates more. Because, you see, Monique says Keisha is the reason why Steven is denying he's the father of her five-month-old son, Don Terrius. Now, look at that child. How do you think Keisha and Steven Dominique? Watch. Dominique is an easy girl. We had sex the first night that we met. When she brought me home, there was already another man sleeping on her couch. When she came up pregnant, she tried to pin the baby on me. Dominique is nothing but a stalker. She's just mad because he's taking care of me and my son and not her child. Dominique was just jealous of what me and Keisha got. She keeps telling my girl Keisha lies, trying to ruin what we have together. Her and Steven were nothing but a three-night fling. She needs to stop interfering in our life and find her baby daddy. Dominique, I do not want a whore as a mother of any of my children. What do you think of that? <laughs> what do you think of that? She can kill first off, because she's standing in, in the back stage. <laughs> three nights because I just slept with him in June. So how was that? Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what he says? He says he didn't sleep with you. And not only that, she says he didn't sleep with he you. He brought her car to my house. Really? Okay. Well, I tell you, what we did, in addition, of course, to doing a paternity test, we did a lie detector test. <laughs> Let me get this. been okay with being the father until Keisha came along. He was fine. He called me. He told me to send pictures to his father. His his dad has a picture of my son. You telling people, you know, that's his grandson. Oh my God. Bitch, and you I shut was up. Right there. Me, so I'm gonna ask her to shut the hell up Where and I'm talking to I'm grown, baby. I'm grown. So when you I'm first grown. met Steve, cool? It was cool? We was cool all the way up until he got with this man looking. When you got pregnant, you told Steven what was his reaction? Steven was happy. He came to the house, and this is the funny she part. He it. came to the house, I said, okay. I told him I was going to take a pregnancy test for him. He wants to have sex before I take the test. Okay, we have sex. He tells me the pregnancy test is going to automatically show a pregnant, well, positive because he just. What? Mind you, he got nine other kids. What, what idiot don't know how a woman body works? He got nine other kids, but he don't know how a woman gets pregnant. Cheer. Cheer. Not nine nine cheer. kids. Well, ten, 10 includes, well, it would be 11 including mine and my neighbor. What, what, what? All right, well, okay, so we might as well meet them. All right, they're going to come out here. Now, let me ask you this, Dominique. Hmm? 
Can you stay in that chair? Yeah. Huh? Don't come out of that chair. Here are Stephen and Keisha. Here they are. Excuse me, Mari. You ain't come never here. talked to me. Come here, come here. Did you never ain't. Big guy. Come here, come here, big guy. Big guy. I ain't tell you I ain't paying for that test. I ain't tell you I ain't paying for that test. Like I said, I ain't talk to you. I ain't been sleeping with your man. You claim y'all been together for a year. By the way, Dominic, I didn't ask you. Do you want to be back with Steven? Steven can. I don't want to. Get the text. Get the text. I want to talk to Steven. Steven. What's up, baby? What's up, Mark? Steven. Yes, sir. You know Dominic. You've been with Dominic. More than three times, mind you. Are you the father of that child? Hell no. Why not? Pregnant and having this child until Keisha came along. No, I told her to have an abortion from day one. You think that child looks like you? No. Keisha. No, 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 no. Keisha. Thank you. Keisha. Keisha. I just like to know what your role is here. She, you know no what? Role. This is what's the killer. She more part of a man than what he is, as you can no, see by looks. She put me in this. She I didn't put her in. I don't even talk to her. I don't have nothing to I slept with Steven okay, and, and I didn't sleep with Keisha. I've been with him a year. This year, September makes a year. Well, okay? baby, I've been sleeping with him since January. Understand. We gave Dominique a How lot of tests. Test. So we're going to find out the answers right now. Right now. You were asked Stephen told you he was trying to get you pregnant on purpose. You said yes. The lie detector determined you're telling the truth. Yeah! Thank you, but you don't want no baby by me. What the mean? <laughs> you were asked if Stephen told you he loved you since he's been with Keisha. You said yes. The lie detector determined you were telling the truth. Yeah! Listen to the results. Have you had sex with Steven since he's been with Keisha? You said yes. The lie detector determined you were telling the truth Ooh. five times. But this only happened three times. Don't the killer. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. I care about this child. That's all I'm worried about. But my thing is... I my son is going to be five say, months Mark, old. When I if call this man... Son, if that's my son, yes. she ain't a part of that package. Stephen, will you take care of that child? Yes, I will. No. That's all I want to know. And now we'll find out. <laughs> When it comes to five-month-old Dontaria Stephen, you are the father. Now he has a chance. Can right? I please get a copy of that so I can tape it on my yeah, ass so both of them can kiss it, okay, please? Pa. Don't get drunk and go to the club. This is what happens when you get drunk and go to the club. You meet snaggatoot people like him, and you end up with somebody who's sleeping with somebody who looks more of a man than what they do. Actually, I'm going to put this on the back of my pants, and this is what he can do. Get a good view of it. She says her husband denies their son for one reason. He says no Mexican baby is born with blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> blonde hair, blue eyes, I'm not the father. And her mother is fed up. She's not shut 17 up. years old, is she? I'm not gonna shut up. When it comes to two-year-old Armani. Oh. Keith 
denies her son for one reason. He don't make boys, he make girls. Oh, he make girls. Keith. You don't have a, you don't have a... I'll never accept your apology for what you did to me. This is Alicia. Now, just a few weeks after Alicia married her husband, Brandon, she found out she was pregnant. And they were both overjoyed until the baby was born. Because that's when Brandon, who is Hispanic, <laughs> took one look at blonde-haired, blue-eyed baby Armani and said, he didn't think he was the father. <laughs> Why would you deny him? Come on, look how beautiful that little boy is. And backstage, there's somebody backstage even angrier than you. Mm -hmm, my your, mother. Your mother, Mona. Yep. You're right. You're damn right. How dare you, you little bastard? Well, why is Mona? Because she's pissed off. He's going to listen to his family and his friends about, oh, he looks nothing like you. He's the mailman's or the milkman's or whatever. Come on. I know who my baby's daddy is. I don't need to lie about it. Okay. Man, if this is my baby, why you guys always say he's not? When he gets into a fight with me, he runs his family, he puts it in his head, and he comes back, and then he does the same right. thing over and over again. I see. But does he yeah, tell you right. he loves you? Yeah, I love him very much. He's my husband. We've been married for almost three years now. And I know he loves the baby, but he still has his doubts. And in order for us to move on and deal with this, I want him to find out the truth. Okay. Well, we'll find out the truth then. We'll find the truth So out. what's the big reason why he thinks he's not the father? Just because he hears people say it. Just because, like, our Is past... it all about the looks? Yes. He says no Mexican baby is born with blonde hair oh, and blue Jesus. eyes. I have never cheated on my oh, husband. He my knows. Dude. knows I've never cheated on him. He just thinks... Why would these friends make this up? He thinks that... He thinks that since he got, we got married, we, we broke up, we got back together. Three days later, we got married because we were just being spontaneous. Three weeks later, we found out I'm pregnant. And then, like, well, you know what? I don't know what you did right before we got married. I'm like, come on. If, if it was somebody else's, trust me, I wouldn't tell you it's yours. I mean, come on. If I was going to pin it on somebody, I'd go find me a rich-ass guy with lots of... <laughs> <laughs> Really? What the hell? Yeah. This is what Brandon had to say, everybody. Me and my wife, Felicia, have been on and off for the last 10 years. When we're broken up, she's doing her thing, I'm doing my thing. How do I know if she slept with somebody else? She told me she didn't sleep with anybody else, but honestly, I think she's lying. How much more proof do I need when it comes out of her mouth? Alicia's mom needs to mind her own business. This is between me and my wife. She has nothing to do with it. She needs to stay out of it. Blonde hair, blue eyes, all you gotta do is look at him once and you can see I'm not the father. I love Alicia. We've been together since we were 14 years old. But if I find out today that he's not mine, I want a divorce. And especially to show her mom the real truth. Okay. Oh, the real truth. Here's Brandon. Brandon, come on out. You're, say, you're saying that, but how, why is it every time we split up, oh, you're not his dad. Oh, I don't need money you from you. I get his first. real dad. You said I said it first. It one, I said it one time, What's and then everybody going to do? What would you're everybody do time? in their then lifetime? You want to f*** somebody up, you say what so, you well, want to say. Well, then you know what? Then we'll get the results. Well, of course, I'm going to say it back. I'm not going to be his dad. Sorry, of course, I'm going to do that. Every time we split up, what do you and your family say? We don't need you. You ain't the father. I'm not pinning it on you. He's your No, I'm a better parent than Oh, okay. Not, yeah. Hey, that's Brandon. Wonderful. What's it like at home? This is some married couple here. <laughs> the thing is, look, I mean, I love her regardless. You do? Yeah. You love people. You're saying, telling me this. Every you time when we split, when we split up, she's always saying. Well, let me right, ask you this. You've been married three years. Yeah. How many times you split up? I don't even know, man. I, I don't even know more. I couldn't. <laughs>
Then when I leave and I say you I don't want to see my son, you go to your parents, your family, I say I want to. I say I want to go see my son. What do you say? You're gonna see him. He ain't yours. Cause you said it first. You see your son much? Yeah, I see him all the time. When we're together, I see him. But when we're not together, she well, says. Well, wait a second. Right now, are you all together or yes, not together? We're yeah. together. He's. He, we are together. How, that's how would you know? That's I mean, I don't know if I'd want to be in the same we room with together. the two of you. We live together, I mean, look, and you're going to say, we're going to find out like the, real truth. You know what, what the real truth. Regardless is. of what the results come out, I'm Whatever. still his dad. I love the kid. I love him since he came out. She you knows say that. No. That's what you she say. She now, can't Brandon. never say, she can't never say that I don't want to be a father of my Brandon, son. Man. Because, hey, you know what? It ain't none of your business. Brandon. Why don't you stay out of it? Like That's I was what you say now. When it comes, if. If it came back, which to tell you the truth, for me, it's a win-win situation, dude. Because if you are, we can finally put it in your face and you can shut your damn mouth and shut your people too. Why don't you but stay out of it, man? Is, your your you daughter's 24 up and years listen. old, not shut 17 up. years old, is she? I'm not your damn daughter. I'm not going to shut up. Child hear all this kind of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, he really all does. The all the time. Yeah, he does. Everybody, here's Mona. Here's Mona. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, wait a second. Mona. Mm -hmm. They're married. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> so you never approved of this? She, she was a, uh, overage. If I had to sign for her, she'd have never married him. I told her don't marry his ass. She Why? didn't listen. Why? What's wrong with I don't that? like him, first of all. I don't like him, period. Why he don't not? like me, and I don't like him. But I didn't marry you. I married your daughter, so it don't matter if you like me or not. <laughs> Mona. If this, if he is the father of this child, okay, we've got to take it down a notch here, right? There's no ifs, Maureen. There's no ifs. Trust me. Told, well, we'll see then. I well, we're going to find out right now, okay? <laughs> we'll find out. He bases DNA on a set of blue eyes. Boy, you're intelligent. <laughs> When it comes to two-year-old Armani, Brandon, you are the father. Bring my son. 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 And gave me a kiss. That's what you should have done. We'll bring so what a, son. That's what a real husband would have done. You didn't even give me a kiss yet. You need to say you're sorry, Brandon, in front of everybody. You humiliate her in front of everybody. You need to say I you're sorry. I told her I've never done nothing like that. Mom, I would never do something like that. This, man. Seriously. They ignore her right now. We're okay, talking. Why, so why are you letting her talk for you, man? Brandon. That's what you're going to do your whole life. Then we She's not talking right now. I'm talking. You guys need to kiss. And make up. Seriously, what the hell? We're going home together. Yeah. Why are you like that? Oh, that's so. Give her a kiss. Look at what's man. Do you want to give him a nice kiss? Yes, but I want him to hug me and tell me I'm sorry. I told you I wouldn't do that. We. Who is it? Who is it? Armani. He's cute. Mom, shush. Thank you. And this woman has no idea if her boyfriend or her boyfriend's stepbrother is the father. Jessica, you embarrassed? <laughs> Actually, a lot. What makes him think that he's a better man to take care of Evan than me? You had the right to be there, and you denied that right! Which brother is the father? <laughs> Keith denies her son for one reason. He don't make boys, he make girls. Oh, that girl! Keith... <laughs> 
I'll never accept your apology for what you did to me. We have with us Jessica and her boyfriend, Adam. Now, Jessica and Adam are praying that a paternity test proves that Adam is the father of their three-year-old son, Evan. Unfortunately, there is only one other man who could be baby Evan's father, and that is Adam's stepbrother, Ricky. Oh, my God. This is Jessica and Adam's story. I'm here today because I have a three-year-old son named Evan, and I'm not sure who his father is. It could be between two stepbrothers, Adam and Ricky. I slept with them both within the same week. I know that was wrong, but I was young and I made a mistake. I did believe that it was Ricky at first. Because Jessica was so sure that Ricky was the father, I accepted it. As Evan gets older, I realize he looks a lot more like Adam. Ricky wasn't stepping up and being a father to Evan, so I made a decision to be there for him. Now everyone is saying Evan looks like me and is convincing me that he is my son. I'm currently with Adam and he is an amazing father to Evan. I want more than anything for this DNA test to say that Adam is Evan's father. <laughs> Jessica, you embarrassed? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Actually, a lot. You do a lot of things when you're young and, you know, stupid and it affects your life and you never realize how much it will affect anybody else's. You knew they were stepbrothers. Yes. And so then you went from Adam to Ricky. Yes. And you thought Ricky was the was I the really father. thought Ricky was. That's one reason why I stopped talking with Adam. So Adam. You were kind of the odd guy out in the beginning here because she thought Ricky was the father. Yeah. I mean, she didn't even assume, she didn't even think that I could be the father. Well, if that hurt so bad, how come you all end up together? Oh, I had left for a while, and then when Ricky and them started talking, I started hanging out with my brother. And then she saw me, and I saw Evan. And the whole time, through all the years, I've been keep hearing, before I even saw Evan again, I heard that Evan looked like me, his mama said that Evan looked like me. You and your brother get along? We haven't talked since all this has happened. How long has that been? A couple months. Before we meet Ricky, he had a different outlook on this. Watch. I'm really mad and I'm sick of being lied to. Jessica told me I was Evan's father and now she's changed her mind. Now she said that Adam's Evan's father and that's not right. I think she did this because I didn't want to be with her and Adam did. Jessica only looks out for herself and it's ridiculous. Adam has now took the son I believe to be mine as his own. What makes him think that he's a better man to take care of Evan than me? Because of this situation, me and my brother are barely on speaking terms. Thanks to you, Jessica, that has all been thrown away because of your lies. All right, he's angry, here's Ricky. <laughs> all haven't talked in a while, huh? That's right. Can you all make up? Oh yeah, I love my brother, he's still my brother. <laughs> you were lied to. By whom? By Jessica. Why? Because she claimed for the first two years that the child was mine. You knew what was going on, you knew what happened, and you were completely fine with that. And when I took you to court, you denied the paternity test. You got a tattoo? Yeah. What's it say? Evan. A big deal, you got a tattoo, and what have you done? What have you done? You ain't done a damn I tried to help. You wouldn't even let my on <laughs> my you yeah, had the right, mom, no, you me. had the right to be there. You had the right to be there. I gave you that right and you denied that right. No, you had that chance. You lost it. You think it's your son? Mm -hmm. You think that child's yours? You think that child favors you? Yeah. Adam, you think that child favors you? Yes. If you're not the father, you all gonna stay together? Yes. You yes. are? Yeah.
When it comes to three-year-old Evan, Ricky, you are not the father. <laughs> when it comes to three-year-old Evan, Adam, you are the father. You're the step uncle. That's, right. That's what you are. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, that is fine. Adam, you want to say anything to your brother? I love you. Look, man, I'm sorry. Just, I love you. I'm gonna be there for him. Okay. I love you, man. Sorry if I ain't going the way they were in the past. We'll be back right after this. Place. Thank you. I'm sorry. I apologize. You are going to be an uncle. I, I, I'm a grown adult. You know, I made a mistake when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, we are still part of a family. So, you know what I mean? Grow up and play the part. You couldn't be the daddy, be the damn uncle. <laughs> Keith denies her son for one reason. He don't make boys. He make girls. Oh, that girl. Keith. You know and this man slept with his uncle's wife. I'll never accept your apology for what you did to me. Is Patrick or his uncle Wayne the father? I'll never accept your apology for what you did to me. Sheena met the man of her dreams when Keith came into her life. Now together, they were on cloud nine. Then they discover that Sheena's pregnant. But all of a sudden, the happiness comes to an abrupt end when Sheena reveals that she was having a baby boy. You see, Keith truly believes he cannot make boys. <laughs> and that's when he began to accuse Sheena of cheating. Watch this. Keith promised me a fairy tale, and he played me for a fool. I thought we was going to have a perfect life together, but instead, I have a four-year-old with no father. When I first got pregnant, Keith was doing everything the right way. He was rubbing my feet. He was bringing me food. Anything I was asking for, he brought it. Keith asked to name my son after him, but then he didn't even sign a birth certificate. In four years, Keith has done a damn thing for my son. I've been doing everything by myself, and I'm sick and tired of it. When Maury reads you all the father, Keith's going to make up the four years he missed out of my son's life. Now, did you all plan this? We planned it. You he, planned it? We planned it. He told me we're going to have a baby together. He said we're going to have a baby together. I ain't together. Playing nothing. what he's talking about. He said we're going to have a baby together and we're going to take care. We're going to be a family. No matter what, he's going to help me take care of it. But now he want to sit here and deny, okay. What's this thing about him only making girls? Because he have three girls, and he say he don't make boys, he make girls. Only make girls. <laughs> boy, please, you made a boy by me? You made a boy by me? This is what Keith had to say. <laughs> I was a great boyfriend to Sheena. I would have done anything for her. One night, I was sitting at home waiting for Sheena. She didn't show up to noon the next day. Sheena came up pregnant after she told me she cheated on me. Even Sheena's own family says this not my baby. Sheena had the nerve to name her baby Keith Jr. after me. I never gave her permission to do that. The doctors told me the exact date when Sheena got pregnant. I looked at my calendar. I was at work that day. There's no way I'm the father of Keith Jr. When Maury reads, I'm not the father, I want my name back. She can name the baby John Doe, Jane Doe. I don't want my name back. All right, everybody, here's Keith. Keith, come on out. Son. Wouldn't you? Not well, by her. her. No, he not by her. her. She ain't nothing but a black hole. Keith, by the way, I've never, no, I've never heard that. Like you, I you bet don't you know. Do you don't know. Hey, I don't do nothing for him because he ain't mine. He like ain't you. mine. Do hey, like your you. old when you, you was four months pregnant, she said you Why, cheated please? up on me. You, my never take care of me. 
told yeah, you that. Because yeah. I never cheated on you. You cheated yeah. on me. Hey, hey, I was at work at the time. You can Boy, see. Well, now you wasn't even working you then. Doc, I was working. No, you wasn't. I, how in the hell are you going to tell Keith, me? Keith, back off. I want to talk, talk to me. First of all, Keith, I got a couple questions. You don't think that child looks like you? No. All I'm four lying, years. Right? I'm all lying. four years, you I'm haven't lying. did. What Keith, you done for him? Keith, take care what of you. What have you done Nothing, for him? Because he ain't I mine. Know. He ain't he mine. Is. Okay, we're going to see when Maury reads these Keith, test results. Keith, Whatever. You take care of your girls? Yes, I do. Seven. I got three lovely girls. Do you believe that you can't make boys? <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, yeah, I do believe that. We're going to find out right now. <laughs> If this, is yours, I, if this is yours, I'm sure you'll take care of it. I will take care of it. When it comes to four-year-old Keith Jr., Keith, you are the father. <laughs> That's all we need yeah. to do tonight, okay? okay? So is that what you gonna do? Yeah, you gonna, gonna help that. me take care of my son? Yeah, I'm gonna be a good father to him. Okay? And okay. that's what I want. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know. Now I know. I'm sorry, okay? And this man <laughs> slept with his uncle's wife. Who's the father? I'm right the father of that baby. I never accept your apology for what you did to me. Is Patrick or his uncle Wayne the father? I never accept your apology for what you did to me. Everyone, this is Heather. Heather's 22. As you can tell, she's very upset. You see, she married a 42-year-old guy named Wayne. Now, their marriage fell apart, and she fell into the arms of another man, Wayne's own nephew, Patrick. <laughs> then she finds out she's pregnant. Who's the father? This is her story. When Heather was 20 years old, she met, fell in love with, and married a 40-year-old man named Wayne. Wayne was always there for me from the first day I saw him. He was always a good husband and made sure I always had everything I needed. As time went on, our marriage started falling apart. With their relationship on the rocks, Heather found comfort in the arms of Wayne's 21-year-old nephew, Patrick. Patrick made me feel good when my marriage fell with Wayne. I knew it was wrong, but I did it anyway. But that didn't sit well with Wayne. Well, Wayne caught me kissing his nephew, Patrick. He was furious. Shortly after that, I found out I was pregnant. I told Patrick that I was pregnant, and he said it wasn't his baby. He told me it was Wayne's baby. Today, we have given paternity tests to both Wayne and his nephew, Patrick, and we will find out who the father of Heather's baby is. Who do you think the father is? Patrick. You do? Yes. Who does Patrick think the baby's father is? Wayne. When you gave birth to your daughter, who was there at the hospital? My mom. Not either one of these guys. Patrick came two days later. Who do you want to be the father of this child? Patrick. Patrick is the father of this child. But who do you want to be the father? No, he's not. I am. Wayne. Wayne? Wayne. PJ, you I'm the father of that Wayne. baby. You'll never be nowhere, PJ. You're always on the run, always on the go. What about your new wife now? She gets pregnant. You're going to run too. Well, Patrick and Wayne obviously are here, and we have given both men a paternity test. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the results, but now listen to how these two family members, how their views on this situation differ completely. Watch. I slept with Heather knowing that she was still married to my uncle. I also know that I wasn't the only one in my family that was sleeping with her. It pisses me off knowing that Heather had sex with my own nephew. When Heather told me that she was pregnant, I let her know that that baby was not mine. She was sleeping with me and my uncle at the same time in a two-week period. Patrick needs to grow up and take responsibility for his actions. He knows and I know that baby is his, not mine. My uncle Wayne told me I was not the father of Heather's baby. So I don't know why they're both trying to pin this baby on me. The fact of Patrick denying his own daughter makes me sick to my stomach. I know this baby ain't mine, but it might be my uncle's. 
We're going to meet Wayne in a minute first. Welcome Patrick to the show. Here's Patrick. <laughs> Why are you so mad at him? Because he don't know how to take responsibility of his actions. Patrick, whose child is that? It might be mine. When she says that she wants something from the child, she'd call me maybe once or twice every three months. I've got all my answer machines. I've got all, all my call logs. Right. She doesn't call me for nothing. If she was because mine... Because the only thing I want you to do is be in her life. I didn't have a father. Then why can't you call me? Patrick. Yeah. What do you think of your uncle? Well, I think my uncle, I think of him like a father figure. I mean, I wish we could work things out, which I know, I know, I know he's not wanting to, but at the same time, apology can't fix what, what's, what's broken. Now there's Wayne, okay? So I'm, we might as well welcome Wayne to the show. Here's Wayne. Wayne, come on out. Thank you, Lamar. Good to see you. Wayne. Oh, now you made a mistake? Yeah. Now you think you're guilty, huh? I knew I was huh? guilty. Pidge, I took you to my way. I know. Who was always there for you? You. Wayne. Oh. Have a yes. seat. Have a seat. Have a seat right here. You want to be the father of this child? Uh, yes, I would love to be the father's child. And if I'm not the father's child, I'll tell you what, I will be that daddy. That child will call me daddy. Right. You got that? Right. I don't care if you're the father or not, PJ. It doesn't matter whether you're the birth father or not, you're going to take care of that child. Yeah. We're going to find out right now. <sighs> when it comes to seven-month-old Summer, Patrick, you are not the father. I told you. I told you. I told you. Wayne, I told you. I apologize for what I did But wrong. I'll tell you what. I apologize to you. I said you're a kid. I but I'll never accept your apology for what you did to me. I know. And in my heart, As a man, you're I done apologize. with me and my family. You're done. I apologize. I, mean, mother, I always love you as a family. All right. You don't be wrong. When it comes to seven-month-old Summer Wayne. <laughs> I never accept your apology for what you did to me. When Heather was 20 years old, she met, fell in love with, and married a 40-year-old man named Wayne. With their relationship on the rocks, Heather found comfort in the arms of Wayne's 21-year-old nephew, Patrick. When Wayne caught me kissing his nephew, Patrick, he was furious. Shortly after that, I found out I was pregnant. I told Patrick that I was pregnant, and he said it wasn't his baby. I slept with Heather, knowing that she was still married to my uncle. I also know that I wasn't the only one in my family that was sleeping with her. It pisses me off knowing that Heather had sex with my own nephew. When Heather told me that she was pregnant, I let her know that that baby was not mine. She was sleeping with me and my uncle at the same time in a two-week period. We're going to find out right now. When it comes to seven-month-old Summer, Patrick, you are not the father. I told you. When it comes to seven-month-old Summer Wayne, you are not. <laughs> now it's time to be honest. Tell me more. <laughs> you guys are family here. I know. Appreciate it. I love you, brother. I know, man. Come on. I'm sorry. Come on. I'm sorry. You shouldn't do this, man. I apologize. Of course. I only got one thing to Why? I wouldn't think. No, why me, man? Oh, boy. I don't know. I wasn't thinking, why? You accept his apology? Please, please. Show respect to other people around here. You have any idea who it is? Yeah. Yeah. You want us to give him a dance? Today on Maury, shocking secrets. Slip. 
with my twin sister. Shocking lie detector results. And shocking cheaters caught in the act. Carrie saw a message about her husband on Facebook. I found a message from another woman saying that she might be pregnant with my husband's child. Just look sad. It hurts a lot. Will a lie detector test save this marriage? Or is the message from Facebook actually true? <laughs> Their wedding date is all set. She's got her dress. The hall has been booked. But then one of April's personal items vanished. It's her sex toy. And she thinks Daryl is using it with somebody else. What, did it grow legs and start walking? After this lie detector test, Will their wedding plans vanish as well? The lie detector determines those results and even more cheating drunk. <laughs> Jacqueline was here two years ago to prove that her son Duntrell no, that's not my it is your was not the father of Holly's baby. You are the father! Jacqueline's back. That ain't my granddaughter. That's your granddaughter. That's not my that's granddaughter. granddaughter. To prove that Duntrell is not the father of Holly's second child. Why do you hate her so much? Whoa! He's going to propose marriage before the results. But what will this family's second DNA test prove? Shocking sex scandals and online affairs uncovered. Next. Everyone, this is Jacqueline. Please welcome Jacqueline back to the show. <laughs> Two years ago. Two years ago, Jacqueline came here to prove that her son, Duntrell, was not the father of a woman named Holly's daughter, Zakaria. But Jacqueline was shocked when I read the DNA results that said, Duntrell, you are the father. Very shocked. <laughs> and they're back because Jacqueline is now trying to convince Duntrell that he is not the father of Holly's second daughter, Kamaya. <laughs> So before we talk to Jacqueline, take a look at the last appearance on the show. I'm Jackie. I know my son is not the father of Holly's baby. Holly's daughter doesn't look anything like me. I know that Holly is trying to bully my son, and I'm not going to stand for it. I've seen her one time and sized her up and said that wasn't her grandchild because of the way she looked. Her skin color, her eyes, and all of that. She looks like me. What do they say? She's too light. When it comes to five month old Zakari, Duntrell, you are the father. <laughs> so, for the record, not only did we give everybody a paternity test, we gave Holly a lie detector test. <laughs> Because Jackie claims that one of the possible fathers of this baby is Duntrell's own father. <laughs> Why do you hate her so much? She, Mari, look at her. She is evil. She look been, at you. She got a dark spirit about her. <laughs> I never liked you from the get go. She ain't nothing but a whore. Okay, you can't make a whore. Y'all better look at y'all oh, You make you can't make a whore. Why have a whore? Do you know that? Do you know that little girl, Kamaya? Do you know her? Your granddaughter. That ain't my granddaughter. That's your granddaughter. That's not my That's granddaughter. granddaughter. That's not my granddaughter. You think, okay. that, you think that looks like your son? No, he says she does not. She doesn't look like the other child, Zakaria. She might because they sisters. Of course, they might yeah, look like. But to me, no, is. she's not my family. She's so not, you don't. She don't look like nothing So you in refuse my to accept her because of all the things you've heard about what she yes. does. Yes. Yeah. All right. Because well, she had been sick. Well, around. before we bring out Holly, listen to what she had to say about this. Watch. I've been to the show once before you to prove to Duntrell father. and his mother that he was the father of our daughter, Zakaria. Since then. We had another baby named Kamaya. And those two idiots are trying to deny her. I never cheated on Duntrell, and Jacqueline knows that. 
my daughter looks just like Duntrell. And Jacqueline can't say a damn thing about it because she have never even seen her. Bottom line, Jacqueline is a sorry excuse for a grandmother. I was right before, and I'm going to be right again. Wait a minute, now wait a minute. Me. Okay, first, first, we're going to meet your son in a second because he's caught in the middle of all this. But right now, here's Holly. Everybody, welcome Holly. Bring her ass around. She thinks you are messing around, even with her ex-husband. That's with a lie. Mom. You and Dontrell aren't together right now, are you? We are in a ro rocky relationship. In a rocky relationship. Yes. She took my son away from me and, and my grandkids. And you. my grandkids. What you're trying to say is you and Dontrell would be fine if it was And wasn't. she would stay out of our business. That's that's my my son. Son. She would stay out of our business. Have you ever cheated on Duntrell? Never. She thinks so? Yes. She hears all these rumors. Yes, what about never. That? Never. Prove to me I, that you have it. Listen, I want to know. Never, talk. I have never had any kind of relationships when I was with Duntrell. You no. Know, me and Duntrell breaking up right. and stuff. You know what I'm saying? He do his thing, I do mine. But as far as being together, right. I, I never cheated on him. He cheated on me. He now, never cheated on now, me. Now, you and know you a know lot it. about that when you were living with my and what? And you know he didn't cheat on me. You know Dontrell, yes, you're caught in the middle, aren't you? Yes. Is that your child? You think that child looks like you? No. Yes. Holly, you, look, yes. Look, no. look at her. Look at her. No. Yes. Look at her. No. Yes, look at her. That's not yours. That's mine. That's yours. It's his. I'm going to go and settle it's this his. one now. And it's yours, too. Okay. Don't try. Whoa. Whoa. What you Test no, or the no, paternity no. test? He know. He know. You think that you do? You think that Holly slept with your father? <laughs> no. 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 Yes, no. Yes. Yes. no. That's yes. nasty. Yes. Ain't nobody yes. want me. No. Okay. Like okay. Wait a second. Yes. No. Yes. I don't believe that at all. Okay. All right. Now listen. We have a lie detector test. We have a DNA. Okay. First. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. You took my grand the first one away from me. Yep. Yep. You when it comes to one-year-old Kamaya Duntrell, you are the father. <laughs> you and Holly, but I want you to get in the life of your granddaughter, okay? You, you hear me? All right, here's the lie detector test. Let me hear you were asked, Holly, during your relationship with Dontrell, have you ever had sex with his father? You said no. The lie detector test determined you're telling the truth. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! You were asked 
during your relationship with Don Trell, have you ever had any sexual contact of any kind with any man other than Don Trell? You said no. The lie detector determined you're telling the truth. <laughs> This is a woman who's true to you, and you get in the lives of your grandkids. I will. I will. Carrie saw a message about her husband on Facebook. I found a message from another woman saying that she might be pregnant with my husband's child. You just look sad. I am sad. It hurts a lot. Will a lie detector test save this marriage? You would not. No, I would not more. You would never do that. Never. Or is the message from Facebook actually true? More than ten? Do it. Do it. Do it. Shocking sex scandals and online affairs uncovered. Next. Everyone, this is Carrie. Welcome, Carrie, to the show. How would you feel? How would you feel if your family member sent a text message to your husband asking him for sex? Oh! That's what happened to Carrie. Not only does Carrie suspect that her husband of two years, Chris, has slept with her family member, one time a strange woman sent Carrie a picture of her and Chris in bed together. The thought of my husband, Chris, cheating on me breaks me. One of my family members sent my husband a text message asking him to have sex. And I can't believe that he wouldn't tell me. My grandmother passed away, and I needed my husband, my best friend, more than anything in the world. And he knew it was nowhere to be found. When I needed him most, I was afraid he was in the arms of another woman. I'm afraid that my husband has cheated on me with five different women. I found a message on Facebook from another woman saying that she might be pregnant with my husband's child, and it broke my heart. I love my husband, but the only thing that's going to save this marriage is the truth. You know, I'm looking at you, and you just look sad. I am sad. Now, your grandmother passed away. He didn't come to the funeral. took off for days and I didn't know where he was at. I found him at his house. The picture you saw of him and a woman in bed, right? She sent me a picture of him and her in bed together. He finally admitted to you that he cheated on you that one time, right? Yes, he did. But you forgave him. I did, because I love him, and I love my family, and I don't want my kids to grow up without a dad. This is what Chris had to say. What? My wife, Carrie, and my kids mean everything to me. And I'm hurt that she thinks I would jeopardize what we have. I admit, I've made some mistakes in the past, but I really just want Carrie to let us move forward. I would never have sex with any of her family members. And it makes me so mad that she thinks I would do that to her. Another woman texted Carrie that she was pregnant with my baby. That girl was just trying to break us up. Carrie's lost all trust in me. I can't go anywhere without her thinking that I'm cheating on her. I really miss the relationship I used to have with Carrie. And I'm hoping that she will trust me again after the truth comes out. Everybody, here's Chris. Chris, come on out. to bed with a family member. No, I would not worry. Then there was a woman. Wasn't there a woman who said she was pregnant with your baby? There was. And did you confront her about that? Did you ask her when you were texting her the other night? I wasn't texting her the other night. We have the lie detector test again. You were asked if you ever had sexual contact of any kind with Carrie's close family member. You said no. The lie detector determined you're telling the truth. Yeah. During your relationship with Carrie, have you had sexual contact of any kind with your ex? 
You said no. The lie detector determined you are telling the truth. <laughs> you were asked when Carrie's grandmother died and you claimed you were at the hospital with your ex. Were you really having sex with another woman? You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> I did not anybody then. It was during that week. That's not what he just said. You were asked besides the two times Carrie knows about during your relationship, have you had sex with any other woman other than Carrie? You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie more than 10 times. The drama continues as Carrie confronts her cheating husband backstage. More than 10? Chris! Jamie believes the man she loves has had a secret sexual affair with her cousin. Oh! If he's cheating, you think you wasted your life. You. Did you sleep with her cousin? No, I did not. Everyone is here to find out the truth, and what happens is truly unbelievable. <laughs> Shocking sex scam and online affairs uncovered. Next. Everyone, this is Jamie. Welcome, Jamie, to the show. <laughs> so this is how it went. Six years ago, Jamie meets James. Yes, Jamie did. <laughs> and she loved everything about James. So when she got pregnant with their now two-year-old son, Jarrell, oh, how <laughs> cute is he? Jamie felt like she found the man she could start a life with. But now, the life that they are living together is pure hell. Because not only does Jamie suspect that James is sleeping with one of her close friends, she also has a feeling that James is having an affair with her cousin, Melinda. I've devoted six years of my life to my boyfriend, and I know in my heart he's cheating. No, he's distant from me. He doesn't sleep next to me anymore. He doesn't want to talk to me anymore. He just, he talks to my friends when he talks to me. I'm more scared of him than anything is that he did sleep with my friend. You know, there's rumors and everything, but she wouldn't come to the show yesterday. I'm scared he's also sleeping with my cousin Melinda. He says he loves me. I haven't been with anybody else. I'm 31 years old, and I don't want to waste the rest of my life. If he doesn't want to be with me, then it is a waste, and I want to know now. I want to know, are you cheating on me? So if he's cheating, you think you've wasted your life? If he is cheating, it's, it's over. It's over. Somebody very reliable came to you and told you that he was cheating on you with your friend. Yes, Murray, she did. Who was that? My cousin, Melissa. Melissa, OK. Um. <laughs> so, Melissa, how did you hear all this? Because someone came to me and told me that he was bragging about this and told them that he was pretty much, he was happy about it. With one he of her go, friends? With her best, one of her best friends. <laughs> you know what the other rumor is? Yes, I do. What's the other rumor? That James slept with my twin sister. Oh! We gave yeah. James a lie detector test. We're going to find out the results. This is what he had to say. My family means a lot to me. I love them from the bottom of my heart. Right now, our relationship is falling apart because she thinks I'm cheating on her. It makes me feel bad that she thinks that I'm sleeping with her cousin and her friend. When I wake up in the middle of the night, I decide I go up to the gas station and give me something to drink. But Jamie, she doesn't think of it. I want this lie detector to resolve our situation that we're having. I want it to bring me peace. Everybody welcome James. Here's James. <laughs> Calm down. You all have a great child together. Yes, we do. Is he a good dad, by the way? Oh, he's great. He's, he's a perfect father. He's a perfect father. But you're not doing anything. No, Murray. Did you sleep with one of her best friends? No, I did not. Did you sleep with uh, her cousin? 
No. Did you get another woman pregnant? No, I did not. Here's Melinda, everybody, her cousin, Melinda. <laughs> Yes, sir. She thinks, your cousin thinks, you slept with her man. How could you ever, you know, men like James are not for me? But, I don't got time. But why? I don't got time. Why did you, you leave know that. Three o'clock in the morning? Jamie. Why did you leave three o'clock in the morning? Jamie, that was just a coincidence like that. You know. What do you mean? He's not your kind of guy. You think he's messing around on her? He's no good and has never been no good. Five years, five years. What has she got? Yes, yeah, she's got a baby, but you can do bad all by yourself. You don't need a man in your face to, do, to help you alone. Well, let's find out the results, okay? We're gonna find out right now. God. James, we asked you, did you have another woman pregnant? You said no. The lie detector test determined you're telling the truth. Oh. <laughs> we asked you, are you having sexual intercourse with another woman when you disappear in the middle of the night? You said no. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Oh. Oh. Sexual oh, intercourse with another woman when you come home smelling funny. You said no. The lie detector test determined that was a lot. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. We asked you, have you had sexual intercourse with one of Jamie's friends? You said no. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> Jamie, we asked James, have you had any type of sexual contact with Jamie's cousin, Melinda? You said no. The lie detector test determined you're telling the truth. Right after this. They asked you oh. by name, James. They asked you by name. You passed on Melinda. Why didn't you pass on uh why didn't she come? Why didn't she come here, James? Because she didn't want to come. Because she was gonna you take talk, a lot of text you test. Talk to her you don't every... know you passed on Melinda. You passed on Melinda, but you, you didn't pass. Know. You, you tested, you they asked you if you slept with Melinda, and then you said no, no and you passed. At all. You I passed, know. Okay. but you did not pass a Why? Jamie's afraid her family will be ripped apart because her fiance is having secret sex with other women. <laughs> will the lie detector test save their wedding? <laughs> or cause it to be called off forever? <laughs> Their wedding date is all set. She's got her dress. The hall has been booked. But then one of April's personal items vanished. It's her sex toy. <laughs> and she thinks Daryl is using it with somebody else. What did it grow legs and start walking? After this lie detector test, will their wedding plans vanish as well? For the lie detector determined. Shocking sex scandals and online affairs uncovered. Next. Everybody, this is Jamie. Welcome Jamie to the show. See, here's the deal. Jamie, Jamie is terrified that her fiance, Josh, with whom she, by the way, has two beautiful children, has been cheating throughout their six-year relationship. According to Jamie, it all started when Josh went away on business. Jamie then found out that he had two girls staying in his hotel room with him. But, 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 he says they slept in the other bed. <laughs> then on Valentine's Day, Josh promised to take her out on a special date at the casino buffet and then stood her up. Where was he? He went out to dinner with a female friend. Here's her story, watch. I love my fiance, Josh, with all my heart. We have two beautiful children together and it would break my heart if he cheated on me. Josh went out of town for three days and I'm scared that he may have had sex with another woman. I found phone numbers. I clothes smell like perfume and there's 
no excuse for it. I'm not happy the way I look anymore, and I'm just scared he's not attracted to me anymore. I really want to take the next step and marry Josh. If he fails this test, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to hear this about Valentine's Day. We made plans. <laughs> And he left that morning, and he went with his friend because it was her and he'd rather spend his ever <laughs> He'd rather spend her with her instead of Valentine's Day with me. And I sat at home waiting for him. <laughs> if you're suspicious of somebody, why would you have two kids with the person? Because I never had two. This is what Josh had to say to my producers, what? Jamie and my family mean the world to me and I would never do anything to hurt them. She's become so controlling that I've lost all my friends. I do admit that I love the female attention, but I've stayed faithful to Jamie throughout the entire relationship. When I left town for work, there may have been guys that hooked up with other women on that trip, but I didn't. I do feel bad for standing Jamie up on Valentine's Day, but it was my friend's Jamie is extremely overdramatic and controlling, and it gets to the point where I don't even think I can handle it anymore. I want the accusations to stop, or I'm out the door. Oh, Josh is out the door. He Here's Josh. What? <laughs> Josh, I love it. So, Valentine's Day was a big mistake, you admit it, but nothing happened. Yeah, definitely. Um, all I did, it was my mutual friend. I knew her for... I knew her for a period of time, so we just went and hung out. Yeah, some always called me and told me, oh, I'm doing this with your boyfriend. You want to listen? No, you don't. That's not a friend. That's not yeah, but, a friend. But nothing ever happened. That was just talk. They, she was just trying to make you angry. You so know, in other words, you what you're cheated. saying, Josh, in your relationship, you haven't cheated. I've never cheated on Jamie the entirety of our, our relationship. And how I bad is it getting at home with all these accusations? Well, it's so bad. Like, I go to work and I come home and it's just not enough. Like, I'm always at home and she thinks I'm always out with somebody else every time I leave because the house. Because every time, everywhere you work, you're always messing with a girl. That's all in everywhere. the past. We need to look forward. We have two kids. And I, I need love you. to. I, come home I need every to day. know if you're cheating. We're going to find out right now. We asked you when you went out of town for three days on business and Jamie heard there were girls in your hotel room. Did you have sex with another woman? You said no. The lie detector determined you're telling the truth. <laughs> we asked you during your relationship with Jamie, have you ever had sex with a woman you met on the internet? You said no. The lie detector determined you're telling the truth. We asked you when you canceled your plans with Jamie on Valentine's Day, did you have sexual contact with another woman? Uh -oh. You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. We asked you during your relationship with Jamie, have you ever had oral sex with another woman? You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> still in love with Jamie. You said yes. The lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> and we asked you, do you see yourself spending the rest of your life with Jamie? You refused to answer the question. <laughs> I want to answer it. Their wedding date is all set. She's got her dress. The hall has been booked. But then one of April's personal items vanished. It's her sex toy. And she thinks Daryl is using it with somebody else. What, did it grow legs and start walking? After this lie detector test, will their wedding plans vanish as well? For the lie detector determined. Shocking sex scandals and online affairs uncovered. Next. Everyone, this is April. Welcome, April, to the show. Now, April, 
April should be happy because in less than two months, she's supposed to marry her fiance, Daryl. She's got her dress. The hall has been booked. The menu has been set. But after today, all of that may go to waste because April suspects that Daryl is cheating. This came about because she found a suspicious email on Facebook. And, and April discovered that Daryl had been having a five-hour phone conversation with a random girl in the middle of the night. And on top of that, April all of a sudden lost a very personal item, and she doesn't know where it is. It's her sex toy. And she thinks Daryl is using it with somebody else. You really think he used it with somebody else? Well, it came up missing, Maury. Well, that, I looked for it everywhere. But that's a personal item. I know, and that's disgusting if he's using it with someone else. I have looked for it over and over. We have moved. I cleaned the whole house out, and I didn't find it. What, did it grow legs and start walking? <laughs> this is ridiculous. And he said... He said what? I don't know where it he is. He said he doesn't know where it is. And only w me and him know where it, where it is. I hide it. Where you had time. it. Right. Yes. In a certain spot. Yes. Okay. And I put it in that same spot every time. And okay. it's not there. Not there. And the wedding is all planned. But, but I am not going to get married to someone I think is cheating on me. You think he's messing around at his mother's house? Yes, he has a neighbor that lives next door to And I look at his text message, he got a message from her. She says, can I tell you something? So I replied, I said, yes, you can tell me anything. So she says, is April around? I said, no. So she texts back and says, I'm for you. This is what Daryl had to say, watch. I don't think there's a man on this planet that could love a woman more than I love April. The only problem is she got a syndrome I call fragments. It's dementia times three. April is so paranoid that she checks all of my information to see if I'm cheating on her. But the thing is, I'm not. She's so crazy. She think I would take her sex toy and give it to another woman. I have my tuxedo ready, my best man is ready, and I will be walking down the aisle as soon as the results are in. By the way, I love his voice. Here's Daryl. Daryl, come on out. Like his smile too. Yeah. You love this woman. With all my heart, more. I asked her to marry me. I wouldn't ask any woman to marry me. I wouldn't put a ring on any other woman but April. Okay, why is someone texting you that she's? I can't control it. I was catching up. Because you're gonna be blaming me. That's why I can't answer the phone when you call me. You didn't remove any of her personal belongings. You know what I'm talking about. Of course not, Maury. I don't know what happened to her tour. We're going to find out. Yeah. We asked you, during your relationship with April, have you ever had sexual contact with any of your Facebook friends? You said no. The lie detector determined... The results are next. After this lie detector test, will their wedding plans vanish as well? For the lie detector determined. The test showed that his wife's been cheated on over 10 times. The drama continues as Carrie confronts her cheating husband backstage. More than 10? Yes!
shocking sex scandal and online affairs uncovered. Next. Everyone, this is April. Welcome, April, to the show. April should be happy because in less than two months, she's supposed to marry her fiance, Daryl. But, but I am not going to get married to someone I think is cheating on me. I don't think there's a man on this planet that could love a woman more than I love April. I have my tuxedo ready, my best man is ready, and I will be walking down the aisle as soon as the results are in. We're gonna find out. We asked you, during your relationship with April, have you ever had sexual contact with any of your Facebook friends? You said no, the lie detector determined you're telling the truth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Come on, keep reading, keep reading, keep yes, reading. Lord, yes, Lord. We asked you, did the earrings April found in your car belong to another woman you had sex with? You found earrings. I found earrings and a driver's license. And then the bad part about it, it was under the driver's seat. So if she wasn't driving the car, she's leaning over to the driver's seat. <laughs> we asked you, did the earrings April find in the car belong to a woman you had sex with? You said no, the lie detector determined. You're telling the truth. Yeah. What I tell you, baby? What I, I tell you, everything, baby? Everything, everything. We asked okay. you, did you give away April's sex toy to another woman now, that you were I? having sex with? You said no. The lie detector determined you're telling the truth. Yeah. Not that type of guy, Morley. I am not that type of guy. You got to find it. It's got to be lost We asked you, during your relationship with April, have you had any type of sexual contact with any other woman? Does that say everything? This says everything, boy. <laughs> Daryl, you said no. The lie detector determined you are telling the truth. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> get that dress out. <laughs> Call up the wedding hall. I tell you, it's going down to the ceiling, man. There you go. Yeah. That, I'm so Thank happy you for this you. Oh, Thank you so much, sir. The test showed that his wife's been cheated on over 10 times. The drama continues as Carrie confronts her cheating husband backstage. More than 10? Do this! Shocking sex scandal and online affairs uncovered. Next. Early, Carrie came to the show terrified that her marriage to Chris was about to be over. I found a message on Facebook from another woman saying that she might be pregnant with my husband's child. <laughs> Just look sad. I am sad. It hurts a lot. Chris took a lie detector test to show his wife he's never cheated. You would not. No, I would not more. You would never do that. Never. But the test determined Chris was not telling the truth. Have you had sex with any other woman other than Carrie? You said no. That was a lie more than 10 times. <laughs> Chris walked off the set enraged, and Carrie immediately went to confront her husband backstage. More than 10? Chris! Listen. You just said it! No, I don't want to be dead, Carrie. I want to work this out. No, how many That's why I came here. That's why I came here. How Three. many? Three. I told you. I want to save our family, Carrie. That's why I came why here. Why did you think about us when you were doing it? What? Well, I've never, ever cheated on you. Ever. And I always take you back. I hate you. I can't believe you do this to me. We're done then. We're done then. We're done then. It appears that Carrie's worst fears about her marriage ending have come true. Keep watching future shows for their update. Until next time, America.
straight from the Amazon jungle. Jack Hanna is here to celebrate his award-winning book, Passport Into the Wild. And Jack didn't come alone. Because he's brought some of the scariest. <laughs> Why is he looking at me? Some of the youngest. It's a baby lion. I haven't held a baby in 15 years. Oh, that's so cute. And some of the strangest animals from the entire wild kingdom. That's the strangest turtle I've ever seen. Jack's also being joined by a giant python snake named Fluffy. Here, Maury, hold it. I'm not holding it. Oh. Oh, I'm not joking. An out of control kangaroo. An extremely rare jaguar. Greatest crushing power of any cat in the world is jaws. That's a gorgeous cat, isn't it? And a Borneo pig named Edgar, who won't listen to anyone. Uh, 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 don't let bite you, boy. Edgar, don't mess with me, buddy. Sure. Edgar, don't, don't go, go down Edgar. there. Edgar. 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 Edgar, be nice to Edgar. Plus, it's the attack of the armadillos. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> that's what it, that's what it. It's an hour filled with wild animals. Flapping its wings. That's called baiting by the exotic animals. And the one and only Jungle Jack Hanna. And it all starts right now. All right, here we go. All right, spring is in the air. The weather's getting warmer. The flowers are in bloom. We're pulling out all the stops because today we are going to bring you the most exciting, the most terrifying, and the most beautiful animals on the planet. And there's only one man who can bring these exotic animals to us, the director emeritus of the Columbus Zoo, the host of the television series, Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. Everybody, give it up, Jack Hanna! Here's my guy. Here's my Montana neighbor. Okay, so, look, I want to catch up. Where have you been? We just got back from the Amazon, Maury. We're 300 miles up the Amazon, everybody. I've, always, I've been to the Amazon before. We're not 300 miles up there. It's the most phenomenal things I've ever seen in my entire life. It's the fastest moving river in the world. I've been talking like it gets... When we talk about fast, what are we talking We're about? We're talking 20, 30 miles an hour. The river just changes daily. We saw the, the pink river dolphin. Very few in the world. The only place they live is this one tributary. The giant river otter, which is as tall as you are. Picture a little otter as big as Maury. Anacondas, 15 to 22 feet long. You wouldn't have believed these. I should have brought 22 one. foot snakes? Oh, yeah, yeah, anaconda. Yeah. Oh, my they God. They love blue, too. They love oh, blue. Oh, no, no. Okay, so anyway, first up, I mean, and this is amazing. Jack has brought a very unlikely pair. We're going to bring out probably two animals you think wouldn't ever work together a cat and a dog. <laughs> well, well that's, that's like a lab, right? Exactly. This is a lab. And what you see here, everyone, I want everybody to look at this very closely. These are two cheetahs. What you're looking at, everybody, are two of the, is the fastest land mammal in the world. Maury knows, I'm sure. The cheetahs clocked at 72 to 75 miles an hour. Now, why is the dog here? Right. I've raised cheetahs both ways. I've raised them without dogs and with a puppy. And the nice thing about raising them with the puppy, cheetahs by nature are very skittish cats. And if we See, raise him with the puppy, the puppy gives them the confidence that they need. They don't realize he's a puppy. They, they think, think it's a cheetah. Yeah, exactly. They think he's one of their litter mates. If you look at the cheetah's foot, it's the only cat in the world with non-retractable claws. The only cat in the world with non-retractable claws. Your cat at home can retract his claws. That's for speed. Look at the eyes, everybody. Look at the eyes. Why are those dark marks under the eyes? Maury knows baseball players, football players put the chalk under, right? Because they look at the lights like this. The cheetah hunts at 110 degrees in the daytime. No cat in the world, jaguars, uh, uh, tigers, lions, they hunt at night. The cheetah hunts in the daytime. They're a solitary cat. And guess what they do? They, they, they don't make their kill by just like an explosion like a tiger. When they hit their prey, they have to grab the throat, the esophagus. They call it a chokehold. 70% of the animals, more get away from the cheetah. And the cheetah, a lot of cheetahs starve to death. This is one of the rarest animals. By the way, the wilds is we have 10,000 acres next to Columbus Zoo. 10,000 acres where we now have had nine babies born this year. Make sure you hear about it. Look it up on the web. It's incredible. Terrific. Thank you so much. <laughs> he got his yeah. camera. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Look at that. Look at that cheetah, look. Wow. Well, and now, of course, anybody who has ever watched, yep, yep. anybody who's ever watched The Wizard of Oz knows that there is a certain animal that is known for its courage. It's a baby lion. And that's who we have here.
This is an African lion. All right, it's only about, uh, this cat's probably about a year old. The cat is called the king of beasts, everyone, the king of beasts. It's an incredible creature. They're social, whereas a tiger and a cheetah are not social. These are very social cat. They sleep about 20 hours a day. The rest of the day is either spent breeding or eating or, or trying to find, find their prey at nighttime when they hunt. They're a beautiful creature. This is a gorgeous one, isn't it? Isn't just it? beautiful. Just great. Just beautiful. Now, what's the difference about the big? Is that the... The, the male has the big the, mane. With the mane. Right. The male has the mane. The female does not have the mane. The feet, you can see how big the feet are now. You can imagine when the females make the kill, they make it with other, other animals as well. They always hunt, they usually hunt in a pride where one stakes itself over here, one's over here, and they hunt as a team. It's amazing to watch a lion, lions on a hunt. They work as a team, not necessarily solitarily. Thank you very much. We'll, right. we, we real quiet here. We'll take yeah, him off. Okay, we're going to take him off. Right. Now, th this next animal is one of the rarest on Earth, and it is another endangered species. Yep. And it is uh, known for its color, and it's called a lemur. The lemur. This is a lemur, everybody. Now, a lot of you are sitting there going, oh, this is Sean Rehab from the Columbus Zoo. Hi, Sean. How go. are you? Nice to see you. See you. Okay. You're going to yeah, like I that. Don't, I don't know. Look, look. Huh? Oh, what are you holding? Okay. Yeah, you, no, you hold, hold it. You hold it. it. No, okay. I'll let you okay, hold it. Okay, you hold it. <laughs> <Yeah>. you, <laughs> so I don't want to get bit by the lemur. <laughs> no, I don't either. <laughs> but the anyway. lemur is from Madagascar. It's yeah. not from Africa, right? Right, exactly. The island of Madagascar, everyone, is about, is out in the Indian Ocean, about a thousand miles off the coast of Kenya, all right? It's a very, it's a pretty large island. Guess what? This is the only place in the world the lemur lives. I was telling Maury earlier. There used to be about 60 different types of lemurs, 60. Today we're down to 26. This animal was hunted for its coat. I'll let Maury just touch his coat there a second. It was hunted for its coat. It's like chinchilla oh, wow. fur. The animal was also Soft. eaten at that time. Today, that's not the point. This is a lemur. This is a red rough lemur, one of the largest lemurs in the world. There's some lemurs you can put in the palm of your hand. Again, they're social, 30, 40, 50 animals in a family. They have a bunch of little teeth, big, sharp, white incisors here. They use not just for cracking nuts and fruit, but also to groom each other. Look at the hands of this animal, everybody. Look at the hands. You know what this means? We now know, we now know scientists know that the lemur is called a pre-simian, Maury, a pre-simian. That means that the lemur was on the planet before monkeys and apes. Can you imagine this? Before monkeys and apes, this animal existed here on Earth. They're a phenomenal creature, everyone. And when you see them in the wild, they, they kind of, they're curious. They're not, they don't run like a lot of monkeys might. They're just kind of curious. And they, you, you, you can't approach them real close, but you can tell, watch the, how the family interactions are. Okay. Thank you Thank very you so much. Thank you so much. Great Columbus it. Zoo. That's Beautiful great. animal. Now. This is something else you don't mess with, because I see them a lot. They're overpopulated in one particular state in our country. In fact, you see them everywhere. Yep. They are alligators, right. everybody. So yep. in Florida, you can see an alligator on just about every golf course. <laughs> Grant's one that... Grant's one of the few people... Oh, no, no, no. Why, 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 why isn't there something wrapped around his jaw? No, because it... Grant's raised this alligator, everybody. Remember, when I was a young man in the 60s, this animal here was on the verge of extinction. And Maury knows about Florida. He plays golf. And this is for any golfers watching. Be careful how you golf. Let me show you something here, especially underwater. Let's see this. He has two eyelids, the alligator. Is that on the camera? Let me try it one more time. The animal, animal's underwater. You think he's sleeping, or you think he might be sleeping on land. He's not sleeping at all. And guess how they hunt more, oh, y'all? They hunt with vibration. For example, if you're in the water kicking or another animal, they can feel their sensors right here, sensors along the side here. Not smell, not eyesight. Their brain is very small. But Steve Irwin, my buddy, taught us a lot about gators and crocodiles. This animal hunts, with, like if you're kicking, they can find the vibration two miles away underwater like a submarine. The crocodile has a much narrower nostril. They are a little bit more aggressive. But remember, you don't have to go to Florida. Oh, my gosh, I can't go swimming because of alligators. They're a beautiful creature, but now they're being hunted again because... There's, they're out of control. Now, they lay eggs, by the way, everyone. They lay about 30 eggs in a nest, like a, like a big old nest of mulch. And they, don't, don't get near them. No, and, and, right, exactly. And the males and females are determined by the heat of the nest. Isn't that amazing? By the heat of the nest. Uh, they're, they're very unique creatures, as Grant will tell you. They have also, he, I don't even open the mouth right now, but there's a flap back there. You want to try it? Oh, I don't boy. know if he can do it or not, but okay, I don't Grant. want to make, uh, I don't make uh, the alligator mad. Why is he looking at me? Here, I'll pull his tail. <laughs> Look back in his throat here. I can't see because I'm back here. It's not uh, easy. What he, you see what he's doing? This guy's strong. Can you see down the shoulder, everybody? There's a flap back there. That flap stays shut underwater. Therefore, if a fish or something swims by, he th they think it's a cave. It's not. He goes, bow. He can eat underwater as well. That's a great, great. shot there. Thanks Thank so you, Grant, much, so Grant. much. Appreciate that. That's Grant. That's this guy Grant. is a, one of the best animal guys in the country right here, buddy. Thank you very much. 
and we'll have more of Jack Hanna's animals in our spring break special right after this. Coming up, Jack Hanna is going to be joined by some of the strangest animals in the entire wild kingdom. Oh. That's what they, that's... Guess what he likes to eat, everybody? Cobras. They love snakes. You're kidding. A giant python snake named Fluffy. Here, Maury, hold it. I'm not holding it. Oh. Oh. I'm not joking. <laughs> and a Borneo pig named Edgar, who won't listen to anyone. His... Uh, 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 Edgar, don't, don't go, go down Edgar. there. Here, Edgar. <laughs> Edgar. Jack Hanna's back, and he's joined by the most exotic animals from the entire wild kingdom. Okay, everybody. So we're celebrating Jack Hanna with our great spring break here. You're the animal. By the way, Jack, that first segment, we've yep. never had that no. many unbelievable animals nope. in a first segment. After 15 okay. years here. Nope. Here we go. Now, here's a, we've got some more. We want to tell you about the animal we're about to see. I mean, it, it's another animal that's rarely seen during the day. Right now, what's the what's the first word in the dictionary, buddy? Aardvark. Aardvark. I'll be darned. Aardvark. Darn. Guess this is the first what? time we've. Ever, that's what, what we have. First time aardvark. on the show, right here. We've never had an aardvark. Nope. <laughs> Look at this. I've only seen, I've only seen this one time, everyone. In, in over 25 years of filming in the wild, I've only seen this animal one time. Is that right? Only yes. once? Why is that? Because it's nocturnal, everybody. Aardvark, right? I can't even spell aardvark. <laughs> if you look at this animal, look at those ears. Look at that nose. I mean, there's it's no teeth, strange, right? isn't it? No, there's no teeth. This is Jungle Joe right here, Bucks County. Beautiful zoo there, by the way. There, put, look at that back foot. Look at that back foot, Maury. And they live in these big old, they dig these tunnels in the ground. A lot of times hyenas will come and chase this animal out of his tunnel. Let's hear it for Artie the Aardvark. Oh, okay. good. Thank you. Oh, I don't know if that's his name. What's his name? Now, his name? Arnold. Arnold. this is an interesting, this is an Look interesting this. animal. I love this Aardvark. <laughs> Jack. I don't know what it is about Aardvarks. I'm sorry. I know. Okay. Now, there's another animal. You don't see him much. Not in this country, anyway. It's called a bitterong. Look at that. Now look at this. We've never had a big bitterong on this show, everyone. That's we a big not. one. This is, this is how big they get. That animal's fur, if, if more touch this, it's just like a bear. Wiry you touch the back of it. Yes, like a bear's coat, exactly. Oh, it's wiry, hence, yeah. Hence the name bear cat, everybody. Hence the name bear cat, because it's kind of like a cat. You see the claws on this animal. Those claws are very powerful. They can dig open anything. And they live in trees. Yes, they live in trees. You see that tail here? This tail is the strongest prehensile tail of almost any prehensile tail animal in the world. A What's possum, prehensile mean? mean like the possum holds oh, his tail. Right. A lot of monkeys have a prehensile tail. This animal has the strongest prehensile tail. But guess what he likes to eat, everybody? Cobras. They love snakes. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The bear it. cat. Oh, yeah. Look at those, those whiskers on that thing, too. Thank you. Okay. Maury, Maury, those whiskers are very important, everybody. That allows this animal to hunt in total darkness with those whiskers. There you go. Thank Beautiful. you so much. And now, of course, we've all seen all the great animated films in the world, and there's uh, no reason not to have a penguin on our show. Yep. Look at them. Look at them. Look everybody, at them. everybody, Maury, Maury, everyone, you're, uh, some, some of you, some of you are saying, some of you are saying, I thought they were black and white. You're right. These are only six months old. And you don't need an ice age to have a penguin. Very good, very good question. What Maury just said. There are about 17 species of penguin. Remember this, everyone. If you're on a game show, this could get you a lot of money. There are 17 species of penguin. Your first answer is going to be, oh my gosh, they all live in cold weather. Guess what? Only five out of 17 live in cold weather. These are called the black-footed penguin, or also the jackass penguin, because they bray like a donkey, and they're from South Africa. However, the show March of the Penguins, you've seen penguins, right, on TV? Sure. Those king and emperor penguins, they can go to 100 to 140 below zero, even though it looks like this animal. And by the way, the penguin has more feathers for squinch than any bird in the world, the penguin does. Okay. Now, what, what hunts these animals here? I have uh, no right. idea. Leopard seals, uh, sharks, uh, all sorts of creatures in the ocean. Oh, and the other thing is, tell them how fast they swim. These animals go like a bullet. When we film these underwater, 
we can't hardly, it's like, a, I, I don't know much about underwater speed. I'm just saying 15, 20 miles an hour. It's, it's like a bull. You can't even see them go by. And they're monogamous. They mate for life. The female lays the egg, and the male has to sit on it for 40 days while she goes out there and has fun at the sea, and the poor male penguin almost dies taking care of the baby. Let's right. hear it, ladies. There you go. Ah, now we have something from down under. Everybody, welcome. Uh, this is a Parma wallaby. And Maury made a good point. Now, what this is, everybody, that Joe has, this is a wallaby. Now, make sure you understand something. A wallaby is a kangaroo. Some people argue that. The people in Australia will tell you that this is a kangaroo. It's a different type of kangaroo. This is one of the smallest wallabies there are, all right? There are different types of wallabies. This animal's full grown. There's even one wallaby, Maury, that you can put right here in your hand that's full grown. Now, what kind of animal is a kangaroo, everybody? A, a marsupial. Exactly, a marsupial. Do you know what that means? There's another one coming after this, right? No. What's that mean? Has a pouch. Right. It carries I, its young in a pouch. Exactly. I want you to bring out the next animal if they would. I don't okay. they're ready back there. Bring them out now. Wow. Oh, this is for me? Can I take it home? Yeah. Is this the baby or is this the rat? Uh -oh. oh, this is the baby. Oh. Am I losing the belt? Ah. Whoa. What's, oh. oh, I see. I thought somebody's lactating there. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> here, here. Why don't you come and show more how to bottle feed it, Beth? Oh, I can't do this. Yeah. I don't well, know. You can hold him. I mean, I haven't, hit, the camera there, so. I haven't held a baby in 15 years. <laughs> now, there we go. Oh, that's so cute. I'll be darned. Anyway, what Maury's doing here, everyone, this is a red kangaroo, everybody here. This red kangaroo can grow to be as big as I am. Get that. What now, you, you see what Maury's doing. Is. A lot of you are sitting there going, why, why, is, why are we feeding this kangaroo here? Huh? Guess what? A kangaroo can have three babies at one time. One jumping out of the pouch at six to eight months, leaving this, this will leave the pouch in about another two months. It can leave the pouch. When a kangaroo baby is born to the size of a jelly bean, it's that big. It comes out of the birth canal, goes on the outside of the stomach, takes one hour for it to crawl and go in the pouch. How does something like a jelly bean know to come out of the birth canal and go up? It's the most amazing birth in nature. It goes in the, it goes in the pouch, attaches to the breast for six months. That's where the baby, that's where the kangaroo lives. And then remember, and then, the, uh, then another one can be born. A kangaroo can have three babies at one time, three different stages of life. Is he all right? Yeah. You can take him off. Look at okay. everyone. This is. I'm sorry. I forgot. But Grant has here, everybody. It, oh. <laughs> anyway, what Grant has here is a, is a red kangaroo. It's not full grown. This kangaroo standing up is up here. All right. I want you to real quickly look at the camera if you can on the back foot. Look at the back foot here a second, everybody. You see the claw on the back foot? You see that claw? That claw is what, what, what one man in, the, in history has only lost his life to a kangaroo. They kick. They kick with the back foot. They go 30 miles an hour, the kangaroo. But we'll take him off. Let's hear it for our big red kangaroo. All right, thank you. <laughs> Very good. All right, and we'll be back right after this, everybody. Next, Jack Hanna is going to be joined by an extremely rare jaguar. The jaguar has the greatest crushing power of any cat in the world with his jaws. That's a gorgeous cat, isn't it? Isn't that terrific? A giant python snake named Fluffy. Here, Maury, hold it. I'm not holding it. Oh. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> and a Borneo pig named Edgar, who won't listen to anyone. Yes. Uh, 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 Edgar, Edgar don't, don't go, go down Edgar. there. Here, Edgar. Edgar. <laughs> Edgar, be nice. <laughs> Edgar. Jack Hanna's back, and he's joined by the most exotic animals from the entire wild kingdom. All right, so spring is here. We're kicking it off with Jack Hanna, yeah. the host of the television series Into the Wild, author of the children's book <laughs> Passport Into the Wild, and Jack has brought us some of his favorite wild and, and exotic animals, but I want to hear about the book. Well, Passport in the Wild, everyone, is a neat book. It takes you throughout every continent in the world. We have all the seven continents, where all the places I've been, you have a little passport the kids can put their... It's one of the best uh, 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 book in, in the educational system throughout the country. So anybody that's in uh, third grade to seventh, eighth grade, you'll love it. Passport in the Wild. Go Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. By the way, Jack has brought a copy of uh, the book. 
uh, for every single person in the audience, okay? You'll like that. So they're going to get that. All right. Now, some of these animals can be terrifying, like this latest one. He has never brought this animal. Everybody has to be quiet. This is a jaguar, everybody. Yeah, shh. Yeah. Everyone, this is, I want you to know this, this is a first uh, on the Moy Show. I've only think I've had this on one of the, my own show maybe 15 years ago. Be real quiet. This is from South America, everybody. The Jaguar, so you know this, shh, so you know this. The Jaguar has the greatest crushing power of any cat in the world with his jaws. Beyond comprehension, the Jaguar. They walk with silence, but that is one of the most gorgeous cats in the world. I'm sorry to say they're virtually extinct in the wild now because of loss of their habitat, but mainly People quit hunting. You can see the coat. You can see why their coats are valued about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars each. That's a gorgeous cat, isn't it? Isn't that terrific? We won't Thanks clap so it, but we real Appreciate quiet. It. Right? Okay. Shh. All right. Now, just have to take our time here a second. You know there, there are in this. Come here, kitty, kitty. Woo, woo, woo. Come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on, kitty. Let me help you. Nope. You got this lady. Oh, this wow. beautiful how lady. Can you do that. I don't know how she does terrific. it. Okay. Now we're going to bring something out. Everybody thinks that this uh, next animal is a monkey, but it's not a monkey. It's a kinkajou. It's from Central South America. And not only that, you know, Maury, we just got through, see you, got, you just got through seeing the jaguar, right? This is something that the jaguar would, would eat in a split second. He's not after this, though, even though I've, I've known to eat him all the time. This is an animal, Maury, if you remember back in the, some of you might be a little older here. If you remember back in the 1960s and 50s, a little bit of the 70s, this animal was sold as a pet in a lot of pet shops in this country. It didn't work very well, everybody. Why? It's nocturnal. Number two, it bites. Who would want a nocturnal, a nocturnal <laughs> I don't know. animal That's who a good bites? Question. That's a good question. But they're, they call it a kinkachu or a honey bear. You see this, Maury? This is one of the few animals in the world that bees cannot penetrate his fur, everybody. Why is that? Because he gets into beehives. What's it, why is it called a honey bear? It loves honey. Oh, it's in the, it's so he it. could go into a hive? Exactly, not get stung. And not? No, with that, with that thick fur. So that's a beautiful kinkachu or honey I mean, bear. It's amazing the way they protect themselves. It, Every it, single it, it, animal has some kind of defense. It's, it's a, you're exactly right. It's, the, Mother Nature gave them things that none of us could ever duplicate. Thank you. Yep. All right. And now great. this next, I've never heard of this. Is it Tamandua? Tamandua. I now, have no idea what this is. I've never seen this in no, my life. No, no. Remember when I told you about, the, the, about this animal here, the, the last animal, Kikachu? This animal lives side by side. They don't live together. But they live in the same rainforest in Central and South America. This is a lesser anteater, everyone. The lesser, there's two anteaters, a giant anteater and the lesser anteater. Kind of similar if you know what a land anteater looks like. But the difference is, this animal lives its entire life in trees. Again, look at this tail here. A prehensile tail, remember what I told you? Just like the lad, like a possum, look at that, just like a possum's tail, exactly. This animal also is called the stinker of the forest. Now, oh no, no. No, 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 it's, it, this one doesn't smell. It's like a skunk? Right, it, beyond the skunk. When Worse we, than a skunk? Well, it's a different odor, more. It's like a, it's like an odor you've never smelled before. And when we film this animal in the wild, everyone, we don't have to see them. I can smell, now that I've been there so much, I can smell the animal and just go right to where the animal is a mile or two away. Thank you very, very much. Very poor eyesight, Appreciate but good hearing. Thank you so much. For you. Now, we've had a lot of pigs on the show, but I don't think we've had a Borneo pig. No, no, I've never seen this. Now, that's a pig. <laughs> now, I'm going to be careful, everybody, because I've never seen everyone. I've never seen a Borneo pig. But what this reminds me of, Maury, and you go, you're in Florida. That reminds me of the, uh, those uh, Russian wild boars in Florida, exactly. right? Yeah. But this is from Borneo. Are you trying to tell me you're calling him by a name? Edgar. Edgar? Edgar's his name, yes. Edgar's his name. Very appropriate. And for does he family. actually respond? Absolutely. Very intelligent animal. Really? Yes. He knows I've never, his name. I've never seen this before. I'm sorry. This animal, more has turned out to be the nicest animal on the show today. I mean, look at this. Now, what would he? What would hunt him in the wild? The uh, the the cats over there, like the tigers. Tigers, yeah. Leopards. Tigers, leopards, that kind of thing. And what would be his? Well, I, 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 don't what, let him bite you, more. Oh, oh, he's playing. What, what, because what, they do have teeth, everybody. What would be his defense? His Edgar. teeth? His Edgar. his what? Tusks. Oh, his tusks. See, this animal will grow tusk, everybody. Edgar, don't mess with me, buddy. No. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we Are should you all right? move on. Are you right? I That's really fine. think we should move on. Thank you very much, Edgar. Edgar, don't, don't go, go down Edgar. there. Here, Edgar. <laughs> Edgar, be nice. See, Edgar. Edgar. Edgar, be nice. Edgar. <laughs> Edgar. Bye, Edgar. Yeah. See Bye, ya. Edgar. Bye, Edgar. <laughs>
That's Grant. Oh, Grant. Okay. We're moving on to another area, ladies and gentlemen. Something that I am very, very skittish about. I do not like snakes. And this is called a retriculated python? Retriculated python. And these are the ones more you all folks have read about in Florida, down the Everglades. This is what happens when you get a pet snake, everybody, and you don't know what to do with it. There are snakes in the Everglades right now, if you've been reading the articles lately, they say 1,000. Some people say 10,000. Some people say they're up to 1,000, 10,000 in the Everglades. So please, do not get a python as a pet unless you know what you're doing, all right? This is a python. Now remember very quick, remember when I told you about anacondas? I was in South America, just the Amazon. Those are anacondas, they live in the water, all right? They have, they have live babies. This animal's a python, they lay eggs. You find the python in Asia and in Africa. The largest snake in the world, they say, is a python. At, at the Columbus Zoo, we had the largest snake in the world, uh, Fluffy's his name. He was 26 feet, 26 feet long and uh, 310 pounds. The largest snake they think in, so far in the world has been 34 feet and I think about almost 400 pounds, Joe. Yes. This animal here, here Maury, come here and hold it. I'm not holding it. Oh. <laughs> What's oh, this? No. Yeah. You can hold it. I want you to see the power. Just put, let him wrap around you. This animal has 220 teeth like fish hooks, all right? 220 teeth. Once it bites, it's one of the few animals in the world that when it bites like this, like this, Maury, when it bites like oh, that, yeah, great. it cannot let go. It, it can't. His muscles have to relax. Well, how do you get gets, him off? You sit there for about 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> okay, though, no, that's very nice. And I'd like to move on, please. Right. We'll be right back Thank after you. this, everybody. Next, it's the attack of the armadillos. <laughs> Okay, that's, uh, that's what it, that's what it, and Jack Hanna is joined by an extremely rare baby leopard. Isn't this beautiful? And much more the downright strangest animals in the wild kingdom. Jack Hanna is back and he's joined by the most exotic animals from the entire wild kingdom. So everybody, we're leaping into the spring season with Jack Hanna and all of his thrilling animal friends from around the world. Now, uh, you don't want to run into this animal. No. I mean, I, I, it, it, is, it is a porcupine, but it's called the African crested right. porcupine. Right. And again, I've seen a lot of North American porcupines, Maury, but never but one time have I ever seen an African porcupine. I, I think this animal, Maury, is probably, I, a lot of you may say, I think it's so beautiful. Black and white, look at this animal. A lot of people, folks, you see very few of these in any zoo in the world, all right? You see very few of them. Isn't, that, isn't it unique? You don't want to touch. No. Trust me. Now, those quills are used for several things in Africa. They're used for hunting. They're used for uh, weapons. They're used for knitting needles. And they're used for decoration. Thank you. Some of, thank you. We have some of our favorite things here. <laughs> armadillos, all right? These are armadillos. I love armadillos because that's what you think you know, you think you want to play softball with it. Now, Maury, this animal here, this is a three-banded armadillo, everybody. Three-banded, all right? This, Maury, is not like the As Maury said, Texas, we have armadillos. South America, we have armadillos. Guess what? This is a three-banded armadillo. Sean, will turn him around. I'll show you the three bands on his back. This is one of the rarest animals there is in Brazil, all right? Why is that? Because they cook it like a taco. He's got batteries in it. Let's see what happens. Oh, it work. Come on, come on, buddy, come on. There you go. He goes real fast sometimes, but right now, see, he's nocturnal. He wants to rest right now. Okay, and we have more armadillos here. There are no teeth either. This we have a screaming armadillo. A what? A screaming armadillo. I've never heard of a screaming and armadillo. And a screaming hairy armadillo. Well, now this is something. Put down your screaming armadillo. Let's see what he does. We'll go catch him. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hairy armadillo. Is that the hairy or this is a hairy? This is Oh, the, hairy. This is a dwarf hairy. Or oh, this is a dwarf hairy, a screaming armadillo. Look at these. Uh, see the hair on those? When they get full grown, everybody, you're talking about something that looks like it came from the dinosaur era. Trust me. And guess what? This is one of the few animals more on the planet today. They date back to the dinosaur era and almost look the same in the dinosaur era. Can you imagine, though, the armadillos back then weighed over 1,000 pounds, unlike today, you can see here. Okay, that's, that's, what, they, that's what they do. But that's what the armadillo does. Okay. Let's hear it for the armadillos. Thank you very much. Uh-oh. 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 We may have to shut down the, uh... oh, good, thank gosh. 
Okay, we talked about those, uh, those animals whose protection was a shell. Yep. Let me tell you a real shell. This is an African tortoise. Right. Th yeah. This right here, everybody. Now, again, Grant's pretty big, all right? That thing is, that thing is over 75 pounds. That Mori is more, not just a, a tortoise, everyone. That's an African spur thigh tortoise. You see the front legs here? See these right here? See those spurs? That's how the males fight each other. I want to show you real quickly how to tell a male and female tortoise. A lot of people ask me all the time, is this a male or female? Right now, this one, everybody, this is a female here. How do you know? All right, think about it. If this were a male tortoise, his, shell, his, his thing would be curved in like this. For, Concave. For when he, when, 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 yeah, when he has to mount the female. So it has to be like that. Oh, oh I this, see. This is flat, obviously. Oh, right. So this, this is a female here. And by the way, what's the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? All right, tortoise is mainly a land animal. A turtle is one that lives in water. Very good. Right? Thank you very much. Grant. Always wanted to know that. Thank you. Now, everybody. Be quiet. This is very rare. He is the smallest of what we call the four big cats. I guess lion, tiger. What's the third one? Isn't this beautiful? What's the third one? Lion, tiger. Uh, oh, lion, tiger would be no lion, tiger, jaguar, um, leopard. Leopard. <laughs> Here we go. This is a leopard. This is a baby leopard, everybody. I can be within 10 feet more of a leopard in the wild, I never know it's there. Sometimes we will find them on the ground hunting, but when the minute they make a kill, the leopard takes their prey up in a tree to protect it from hyenas and other creatures, other animals that might take the food Good. from the leopard. Thanks so much. That is beautiful. Appreciate Thank it. All so right, much. everybody. By the way, everybody, you can go uh, and, and find out all about Jack and what Jack has to do at uh, www.jackhanna.com to find out more about Jack, his hit show, Into the Wild. Okay, we'll be back right after this. Coming up, Jack Hanna is joined by some of the most incredibly rare birds. I love it with the head. Look yep. how far they yep. can go around. Yep. Yep. And much more of the downright strangest animals in the wild kingdom. Here's a tegu lizard. Look at that top. Jack Hanna's back, and he's joined by the most exotic animals from the entire wild kingdom. So everybody, the winter's over. Warm weather's here. Today, none other than Jack Hanna bringing us all of his favorite spring animals straight to our show. And now, uh, we've got birds. I don't like this bird too much. A vulture, a yellow-headed vulture. Now, a lot of you may say, oh, it's just an old vulture. Who cares? Well, let me tell you something. Who cares? I care. Because this is the Mr. Cleanup. Like the hyena is a cleanup in Africa. Notice the bald head, everybody. Notice the bald head on your vulture. All right, like turkey vultures. They do that because they go inside a dead animal and they eat everything, all right? That's a beautiful shot right there very good. Uh, of the, of the Thank vulture. You very Thank much. you so much. This next bird, this has always fascinated me. I've always been fascinated by owls. What? What's going on here? Everyone, this is unique. This is why I like it. I love it with the head. Look yep. how far they yep. can go around. Now, now what, see what more you say? Why is that? Does anybody know why the owl's head does that? His eyeballs are so big, they cannot move in his socket. Anyway, this animal has the greatest eyesight of almost any animal in the world. And not only that, they call the owl the bird of silent flight. If that owl were to fly over your head at four inches, you would never hear it. A bird of prey, a vulture, you'd hear it flapping its wings. Now, right now, he's, that's dead. called baiting, by the way. This animal's hit by a uh, car, so that's, they rehab a lot of these animals. Plus, this bird here looks like it might weigh, what, about, oh, two or three pounds, right? This bird doesn't even weigh a pound. It's all uh, hollow bone and feathers, this bird. Beautiful, Great. isn't it? Thank you. Beautiful owl. I love Beautiful that bird. Owl. The largest owl in the world, by the way. It's the largest owl that, that Grant has. Now, here's something I've never heard of. What is a zorilla? Okay, this is also, there's only four of these in the United States of America. Only four. Four of these? Four in the whole country. This is a young zorilla. And by the way, as Sean will tell you, this animal has the worst smell of any animal, am I right? Yes. And you look it up, look it up, everyone. It'll tell you the worst smell of any animal in the world. It makes a skunk look like a, a perfume. I'm serious. Well, guess what? Then we have two perfumes for you because we have two skunks. So let's bring the skunks oh. out. The yeah, but you know, I mean, I know what a skunk is and I know what a skunk can do. These look like very nice animals. Well, now, Maury's saying they're nice, but Maury's got just what most of you folks might be seeing out there and seeing at home. Do not ever, remember everybody watching this show or in the audience, don't ever, ever take a skunk from your yard. Why is that? 
Skunks can carry the rabies virus and not have any symptoms, all right? And if your dog gets squirted by one, don't laugh at this. Put uh, ketchup and that kind of stuff on them. That'd be the best thing to get the ketchup. smell out. Ketchup. Uh, very good. Our dog. Thank you very much. Now, Jack also has brought with us a tegu lizard, a tegu lizard. Wait, this is a tegu lizard. Here we go. Oh, wow. Here's a tegu lizard. Well, okay. Look at that tongue. Look at the tongue. This is the red tegu lizard. Most of the tegu lizards I've seen, everybody, most of them, this is pretty rare. I've never seen a, I've seen black ones all over the place. This animal here loves to eat eggs, everyone. Now, will it eat a bird or something like that? Of course it will. Uh, but the animal is, is a creature that smells with his tongue. Remember that. It picks up particles when he sticks that tongue out. Great. Thank you, Thank you very South much. America. We'll be back Beautiful. right after this. We're going to wrap this up. Next, Jack Hanna is bringing out some of the slowest. They slow. And the downright strangest animals from the entire wild kingdom. Look at that. That's the strangest turtle I've ever seen. Jack Hanna's back, and he's joined by the most exotic animals from the entire wild kingdom. I mean, we've had, we've had some great animals that Jack has brought us, uh, and, and not only great, but rare. I mean, but next up, uh, one of the, really, I mean, this is the slowest moving animal on the planet, planet probably, yes. The one of the this slowest is, yes, exactly. This is a sloth, everybody. This, everybody, is a sloth, Maury. This is a two-toed sloth. If you look at the front foot here, you'll see two toes. There's a two-toed sloth and a three-toed sloth. Three toes much, a little bit bigger than this. Mm -hmm. This animal, everyone, does date back again to the dinosaur era. But guess what? It only comes down the ground one day a week. Why does it go down the ground? To go to the bathroom. Think about this. If it went to the bathroom in the treetops, the jaguar, the harpy eagle, other animals would hear it and go up there and eat the sloth. We have another great animal here. I always love the name of this animal. It's called a kookaburra. Oh, yeah. The a kookaburra. A kookaburra. It almost sounds like that's a sound that something makes. So this, this bird. Uh, uh, yeah, you heard that during the show. But this is a kookaburra from Australia. And I'll tell you, you heard him. Did you all hear him before the show, didn't you? I know he did. I love this bird. <laughs> He's just a little tired right now, okay? Okay. We may do it in a minute. All right. I don't know. Thank you very Thank much. You, we also a have... Girl. We have our own tunnel. Look at this, everyone. You'll never see this more. You've never seen one of these on here. No. Ever. Look at that. That's the strangest looking shell it, and turtle I've ever... I told ever, you. That's the longest neck turtle <laughs> I've ever seen. You'll never see one longer. All right, everybody. It's springtime. Everybody thinks of one particular animal in the spring. I wonder what Thank it you. is. What do you think that animal yeah, might be? A rabbit. We're going to look at rabbits. We have two kinds of rabbits. We got a large rabbit, we got a small rabbit. Now, more, more, you know something? Come on, this is Easter time. You know what, everybody? Guess what, Maury? These were the first animals I had. If you read the books, really? Kids is that, ask me. Is that your first animal? On our farm in Tennessee, you know the old saying, you start with a few rabbits? I literally had 240 something rabbits in the first three years. I only started with six. As it's Easter time, everyone, remember something. If you're going to get your child a rabbit for a pet, be very careful. Don't do it unless you have a home for it. Once you, it's a real cute little animal. You bring it home, and guess what? It has nowhere to go. This All is right. a beautiful rabbit here. That's a little dwarf rabbit. That's a dwarf rabbit. That's full grown, everybody. That's, That's full a, grown? Yes. Wow. Isn't that cute? I love rabbits. All right, we'll be back. we got special surprises for everybody when we come right back. Come here. Come here. Next, Jack Hanna has a special surprise for all of the children in our audience. Jack Hanna's back, and he's joined by the most exotic animals from the entire wild kingdom. Okay, everybody, we've had so much fun with Jack today. Jack Hanna and all of his special wild animals. Right here, and right we here. have surprises, by the way, for everybody in our audience. Everybody in our audience is going to receive their very own Maury gift bags filled with wonderful goodies, especially Jack's book. First, everybody's going to take home your very <laughs> own stuffed here. animal. We have a stuffed teddy bear, thanks to Perfection by MJC. And to check more stuffed animals out, you can visit Perfection at www.perfection.com. Everybody's going to get animal wall murals, thanks to our friends at Kitty Cows. We want to thank Wislow's World. You're all going to receive your own book, The Traveling Tree, and also a monkey plush, thanks to Paramount Home Entertainment, for DVDs of PBS's Dinosaur Train and uh, Peter Noon Family World Tour Adventure, all right? And last but not least, 
We want to thank Cheryl's Cookies. Everybody's going to see some delicious cookies in them at www.cherylscookies.com. And more than anything else, we want to thank Jack Hanna, the Columbus Zoo, the Bucks County Zoo, Wild World of Animals, yep. and all of you out there. Thank you very much. And you're going to get Jack's book, his new book. Enjoy the warm weather, everybody. Thanks so much to Jack. Right now, on a dramatic Mari, three young adults ready to show this man Greg. He wasn't there for you when you were growing up. Not at all. I need my daddy. I, I, I know you. But he is their father. I don't think any of these kids are yours. I feel automatically they wasn't my kids. What are you crying for? I love my What are you crying for? The DNA results are in my hand. This is going to settle it once and for all. And even more dramatic paternity tests are coming out today. I told you! I told you! Involving young teens. When it comes to eight-month-old Kaylee. A single mother with a special needs child. Find out right now. And all of this unforgettable DNA drama. Yeah. What can I do? Is about to begin. Everyone, this is 19 year old Kiana. <laughs> this, is, this is her 21 year old brother, Greg. <laughs> and their 22 year old sister, Laquana. They are all here for one reason, to find out if this man, Greg Sr., is their biological father. Oh. You see, for the last two decades, Greg Sr. has denied all three of these young people. Oh. In, fact, in fact, Greg Sr. claims their mother, Latrell, was living a very promiscuous lifestyle. Okay. So listen to how 20 years of denial has affected these three grown children. Can you please bring the picture to you and tell me what goes to your heart? I feel like this is my true father. He, he looks just like me and I love him so much. I want him to be my daddy, but he denied me. He denied me so much and that hurts me. I grew up knowing this man is my dad and I love him, but it hurts to know that he's, he don't think that I'm his daughter when i look at this picture i mean it makes it's kind of it kind of pisses me off because um, i see that my sister them crying because they wanted their daddy and their life or whatever and like, i want him to know that if you was gonna have all these kids you should have took care of your responsibility as a man and took care of your kids yeah i just want him to know when the results come out that he needs to step up even though i'm older now he still needs to step up and be a father to me i can just sit back and visualize when i was young and he said I'm coming to get you all, but he never showed up. Okay, so I want everybody to know that Latrell, their mother, is adamant that Greg Sr. fathered all three of her children. You believe your mother, or do you believe Greg? Oh boy, I believe my mother. Look, look at my mom, she doesn't lie to me. That's my mom, I love her so much. I love her so the, the last day of my bro. My yes, dad needs Lord. to step up and be a dad. Yeah. Yeah. But, here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing with you, Kiana. I must say, your father, he's always said you're not mine, hasn't he? Yes, he has said that for 19 years, and today we're going to show him that today I yeah. am his daughter. Who do you find?
find out that your father's name was not on your birth certificate? I found out this two months ago, and I went to the DMV, and I called my mom. I said, Mom, is there anything you want to tell me that I doesn't know? She said, your daddy said, oh, you not here, so he's not going to sign the papers. Oh. I took the thing off, and I gave the piece of paper to the lady, and she said, well, ma'am, this with you. Here's your birth certificate. It hurts my heart. It, it, it really did. I'm, I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. And that's dis right. disrespectful. Okay. Now, you've known him all your life, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have known my so dad all my So what's the relationship been like if he denies you? There is no relationship because he haven't been there but in and out. I need my daddy. I, I, I know you. Oh. Greg. Sir. You have his name. Yes, sir. Is he your father? Yes, sir. Do you treat him as a father? Not really. He never been. Or he's a coward. He's a coward. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, was <laughs> there for you when you were growing up? Not at all. Not around? Not at all. Laquana, you're the oldest, aren't you? Yes, that's correct. You've always felt that you had a connection to Greg that your brother and your sister didn't have, didn't you? Right. Why? What happened? Well, as when we were young, he always felt that I was the only one that was his, his, ch his child. Really? You, but that changed. So you grew up as a youngster thinking that you were his daughter. Right. When did it change? It changed about a week ago. What? He called me on the phone what? and said, Laquana, I am not your dad. You need to call your mama and ask that, her. That's the first time he ever that's said that. That's the first time he ever told me that. You he... think you look like Greg? Yes. Who yes, I, I, I look like Greg? Yes, I look like Greg. We have, all of us have this height, except for my sister has my mom height. Me and my brother have the same height as my dad. Right. Yeah. Greg, you think you look like Greg Sr.? I mean, I look more like my mom, but yes, I think I look like him. Here's the thing. Your father has no problems talking about your mother, does he? Talks about your mother all the time. Yes, very yes. disrespectful, and I don't like it. <laughs> Says when, when he was with your mother, she was promiscuous. She was with other people. Well, he was with other people, too, but didn't nobody complain. <laughs> Get to the bottom. How I feel about it, it takes two to make one. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, everybody, before we meet Greg Sr., who these kids say is their father, this is what he had to say. My relationship with Latrell was off and on because I knew she wasn't nothing but a liar. I've been paying child support for these kids for 18 years. Knowing all the time these three kids are not my kids. I never signed a birth certificate, so I don't know why she's saying these kids are my kids. They don't even look like me. Matter of fact, they don't even look like each other. When she first got pregnant with Laquana, I immediately had doubts. Then she come up pregnant with LaGreg, and I wasn't even around. Two years later, I popped back up in Latrell's life. She's already pregnant with Kiana. How could I be the father? The timing just don't add up. The trail has some skeletons in her closet, and she needs to come clean with her children. All right, everybody. Here's Greg. Welcome, Greg. Because she's missed her father all these years. That's why she's Murray, crying. I haven't left these kids. I haven't left these have, kids. Have a, here's the one, Greg. You're the bad guy when it comes to my audience. They're they, they gonna get it. They're gonna get it. 
You don't think any of these kids are yours? I have doubts that these kids are mine. Doubts? Or, or automatic they're not Auto mine? I feel automatically they wasn't my kids. Oh. Stepping up, being a daddy to y'all. Because guess what? I've been there for you all this long time. There is a big missing piece to this puzzle. And that's the mother, Latrell. And when we come back, we're going to meet Latrell and have three DNA tests when we come back. Don't go anywhere. All three dramatic DNA results are next. A 16-year-old struggling teen mom. She's still in love with this teen boy, even though he does nothing for her baby. Both of their mothers are here, and they're extremely divided. What will the DNA test show to these two teens and their mothers? And... A single mother, two babies, one disabled, and she's doing it all alone. Is Greg the father of these three young adults? A dramatic hour of Mari continues. We've been talking to 19-year-old Kiana, her 21-year-old brother Greg, their sister 22-year-old Laquana, and the man who the three of them want to be and prove to be their father, Greg Sr. Now, Greg claims their mother, Latrell, who he admits he was with for off and on like five years, I think. Is that yeah. about right? Yes. Uh, that she was promiscuous. She had a lifestyle that one of many other guys could be the fathers of these three kids. Well, let's hear from the mother. Here's Latrell, everybody. Yeah. You know these kids ain't mine. Yeah, you, I, how you gonna say that to me? You uh, was together off and on and all these kids was yours. Let me tell you something. And Let I me was, tell you every something. Every time I was pregnant with them, I came and told you. You know that. Because you I came and told, told me that. I told y'all I come right back and got pregnant with Kiana. And when I had LeGreg, I came and took and... you, take you, and you told me, get that baby out my face. That ain't none of my child. That's I definitely did. And I, and I, I still, and I, yeah, and he's sitting right there. I still, the, the things that they do and the way they act, they can't be my church. Greg, yes, have, they is. They're your church. Yeah. Have a seat. You, and, 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 you, listen to me. Listen. Hey, okay, listen. Kids. It, for real? Yeah. Well, let me tell you this, Trail. Let me tell you this. So you stand here before me, and, and you, you look at these three kids that you say they're mine. They are you, yours. You tell me you never messed around on me. You tell me that on national television that you never messed around on no, me. No, I ain't messed around on you. Oh, wow. Sit down, Latrell. Sit down, Greg. Tell me why you think he's saying this. Why do you think? Because he don't want to step up to the plate and be Wait a, a minute. father. He has... Wait a minute. He's been paying child support, he says, for 18 right. years. Why would a man pay child support, ch uh, child support for a children that ain't theirs? No. And then he Murr, Murr, listen, 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 Murr. This is going to settle it once and for all. Murr. Yes, yes. Murr. Yeah. I ain't signed no birth certificate for these kids. I ain't signed no birth certificate for these kids. If I show that you're the father of these kids, you go back and the sign that birth certificate. Oh, this, yeah. this. Yes. 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 Go back and sign. Go back and sign. I'll say this to you. I, I'll say this to you. And I apologize if this DNA come back positive. But if it come back negative, I'm still going to love you. Because... In these last last years, especially you and you, who do you call me? I call you daddy. Who do you call me? I call you daddy Greg. 
Have I ever told you from these lips while you got on that in the TV, you wasn't my child? You call me. I ask you a question. Have you, yeah, have you, you ever, saying, have you ever there, heard me I tell was you? There. Huh? I was there, it don't matter. You it, know what, daddy, it don't matter. Oh, so, so, so you can't you know, admit I'm to what I said? Right now. Uh, huh? I'm gonna say hello, daddy, man, boo. Hey, she got your last Greg, name. I'm gonna settle a 22-year-old mystery right now. Have a seat. Hey. When it comes to 19-year-old Kiana, Greg, you are the father. When it comes to 22-year-old Laquana, Greg, you are the father. When it comes to 21-year-old Greg, Greg, you are not. Latrell, we'll be glad to help you out oh, any if you want to pursue this, okay. if Greg wants to pursue this. But all I know is this. He's got two loving sisters, a loving mother, and a man who is going to step up because you've yeah. been around here. A 16-year-old struggling teen mom. She's still in love with this teen boy, even though he does nothing for her baby. Both of their mothers are here, and they're extremely divided. What will the DNA test show to these two teens and their mothers? Is Greg the father of these three young adults? A dramatic hour of Mari continues. Everybody, everybody, this is Kim. Welcome, Kim, to the show. This is, this is Kim's, this is Kim's mother, Marianne. Welcome, Marianne, to the show. We do too many shows focused around teens who are too sexually active at a young age. Yeah. Kim is now 16. When she was 15, she got pregnant with her eight-month-old daughter, Kaylee. Look how cute she is. Now, being a teen mom is hard enough. But life can even be more difficult when the father of her baby, 17-year-old Damien, and his mother, Patty, began to deny that he is the father. Now, Kim, let's talk about your relationship with Damien. What was it like? It was perfect at first. It was? Yes, it was. As soon as I got pregnant, things just started to change. He started doubting. He said I was cheating. It's most of his big it's ass his mother's mama. fault. Running his mouth. Why, why is it his mother's fault? Because she she's got him under his her shirt tail. Right. I mean, really, she's she and mother but a mouthy ass Yankee that what? come down here. I mean, that's what she is. Wait, wait she come minute. down whoa, here. From, whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not refight the Civil War here. I, I mean. mean She shouldn't run her mouth about us and come down here and run her mouth about us and then deny the child knowing that, that he's the father of the baby. How do we know I mean, she's really? the father? We don't know he's the father. She ain't nothing How do we know he's the father? She got it from him, no, you must. Let's get serious. 
That's a beautiful little girl. Thank you. Yeah. You think that little girl looks like him? I mean, Here's look at her crying. I mean, there's no sense in it. But there was a point, there was a point when Damien was there, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. And then people began feeding him, is that yep. it? All this information that you say is false. Mm-hmm. Not just people, his mother. Oh, his mother. Didn't say nothing. It wasn't her. You need to get your story her straight. Her mouth, just like she is now. She needs to keep her mouth shut. He'd be a decent boy if he she keep her mouth shut. So before we meet the people from the north, this is what Patty and her son Damien had to say. I called the Morris Show because I have doubts about being the father of Kim's baby because she cheated on me. I raised an honest, truthful son. He's not going to take responsibility of somebody else's child. I'm only 17, but I was going to step up and take care of the baby until I found out she was a liar and a cheater. Kim and her mother. They tore my son's heart out. That's what they did. Kim cut off all contact with me, and that made me doubt the baby even more. They don't want him to see Kaylee, and that hurts, because he got attached to her. I haven't seen the baby in almost three weeks, and it hurts. He doesn't know if Kaylee is his or not, but he is hurting so bad. I'm confused about the DNA results, because either way, I'm still hurting. I do want Kaylee to be his daughter, because I do love that little girl. But then I don't want her to be, because I don't want him to have any more part with that family. I'm sick and tired of people calling my son a deadbeat dad and me a deadbeat grandmother, because we're not. We're good people. All right, everybody here, Damien and Patty. Hi there. I don't understand. You want to be the grandmother, but you don't want to be the grandmother. I want to be her grandmother. I do. I truly love that little girl. She took my heart. Aww. But I, then in a way, I don't, because I don't want to have no part of the family. We don't want to have no part of her either. Wait a minute. So, Damien, things were cool with you and Kim. Everything was good. And then what happened? Well, everything was fine up until I got a Facebook message for someone in uh, seven states away saying that she told them that she cheated with another guy. And that's where yeah, all this started. This is not the Another part of it started. Anybody can make a Kim page and mention my somebody. House. I'm going to go against my mother to clean their nasty house. You, know you want to be the you father? You, you want to be the friend. father of Kaylee? In a way, I do, and then in a way, I don't. Oh. Oh, yeah. If you are the father, you'll be part of her life. Yeah, I'm gonna take him to court and fight for her. He ain't gonna do nothing for that baby. He ain't done nothing for the baby we since done been for born. that baby. We bought yeah. baby clothes. Yeah. We yeah. bought yeah. diapers. Yeah. We yeah. bought everything. Yeah. Out to my house, am I right or wrong, kid? Man, you ain't brought nothing. You're a liar. Okay. You're, you're a liar. You're, you're a liar. liar. Oh. Thank you. She lives with me. I know what she's got. I feel oh. no sorry for her yeah. living in your nasty oh, well. home. Do you want to be with Kim? Not no more. No, I don't. You don't. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I, I'm going to sell it right now. <laughs> when it comes to eight month old Kaylee, Damien, you are the father. <laughs> After dealing with tremendous loss. You got pregnant with twins, they died. Yes. You got pregnant with, with triplets, triplets they, they died. Yes. Paulette's now dealing with raising two children by herself. 
including caring for one child with cerebral palsy. Look at the dirty on your forehead. Look at your forehead. Man, I, Junior, yeah. I don't see it. I don't see it. What will these two extremely important DNA tests prove? We're going to find out right now. Yeah, I want to see this. Is Greg the father of these three young adults? A dramatic hour of Mari continues. Everyone, this is Paulette. Welcome, Paulette, to the show. <laughs> Paulette is in desperate need of help and support. See, Paulette has two children, one-year-old Jatonio and five-year-old Antonio Jr. Aww. Now, Paulette is raising both of these children alone because this man, Antonio, refuses to accept that these are his children. <laughs> The, stake, the stakes are high in this DNA story because Antonio Jr. has cerebral palsy. Aww. Paulette puts every ounce of her heart and soul into caring for and nurturing this wonderful special child. You dated him for six years. Yes. He denies your two. And I'm tired. I'm sick of it. Now, I'm sick of it. I'm like, everybody should but, know. Everybody should know the pain that you've lived through. Okay. Antonio Jr. was a twin. You yes. Got, his, his, his twin died. Yes. You, had, you got pregnant with twins, they died. Yes. You got pregnant with, with triplets, triplets they, they died. Yes. Why did he deny? Um, what did he tell you? Um, cheating. He thought I was cheating on him. But he's the father. Yes. He's no, ain't no way, ain't nobody else no father. He's a thousand percent sure he's the father of my two kids. Now, as we said, Antonio Jr. has cerebral palsy. Yes. Now, there are lots of forms of cerebral palsy, and this is severe. And... I go through a lot. I know, because we... Every e day. We even did video on what a day was like... Taking you, care of him. Taking care of this little boy. Watch. Paulette's five-year-old son, Antonio, suffers from cerebral palsy. From the moment he wakes up, Antonio needs Paulette's undivided attention. Most five-year-olds are able to feed themselves. For Antonio, mealtime takes on a whole new meaning. Because Antonio is unable to walk, Paulette routinely gives her son physical therapy. While struggling to raise a handicapped child, Paulette also cares for her one-year-old son. A single mother, two babies, one disabled, and she's doing it all alone. You, you say you're convinced yes. that you know why he denies these yeah, kids. Yeah, because he why? cheated and he feel I cheated on him and I didn't. If you prove he that did. he's the father, would you welcome him back into your life? And I'm going to welcome him back to take care of his kids. He can be in his kids' life, not my life. He can be in his kids' life. This is what Antonio had to say. There is no way I'm the father of Paulette's two kids, Antonio and Jatonio. I had a relationship with Paulette for over six years. And then after we got broken up, she decided to go sleep with 10 other people. My kids might not be mine. She even gave me an STD. When I look at Antonio, he doesn't look anything like me. I'm dark skinned, he light skinned. I feel bad he got a disability, but I still don't think he's my child. Now Paulette trying to make me seem like a deadbeat father. That's a damn lie. I've been a good father to Antonio and Jatonio. Give them money, buy them clothes, whatever they need. I admit I pulled away from the boys, but I'm sick of Paulette and her lies. And nothing's gonna change till I find out if these my kids or not. Everybody, here's Antonio. Are you for real, though? You for real? Are you for real? So I want to be with you. Kids. I want to be with you. Yeah, you want to be with me. That ain't the whole. That yeah, ain't yes got it nothing is. to do with it. That ain't yes got nothing is. to do with our kids. Right? Yes, it is. No, I don't. I don't want to be with you. I don't want you. You want me. No, it ain't you that. Cheated no. No. you cheated on me. You cheated on me with her across the street. Look how many people you not cheated with. You messed with somebody across the street from where I stay at. Look at your Tony forehead. Look at your forehead. Man, I don't see it. I don't see it. Look at her skin. I don't see it. He look like me. 
see it. I don't see it, but I've still been there for them kids. And if you're the father, you'll be there even more, right? Uh, most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah, we gonna see. They gonna be mad regardless. They might regardless. We gonna see. They my kids regardless. We gonna see. By the way, let's clear this up. Do you want to be with her or not? No. It ain't even now. Keep why it she, real. Keep no. it all way real. This is what I want. I want us to be able to have a, a, a parent relationship and take care of my kids. That's all. Where you, you be at? Overdue house. You ain't there. You be overdue house. You pick your kids. You be overdue house, man. You be overdue house. You ain't there. All right. You ain't there. We're going to find out right now. Yeah, I want to see this. I want to see the same. When it comes to one-year-old Jatonio, Antonio, you are the father. I told you! I told you! That's your son? I told you! Can I get an apology? That's your son? Can I get an apology? You ain't finished. When, it, co when it comes to five-year-old Antonio, Antonio, you are the Can father. Okay. 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 Uh, are you never hear me say that again? And I know you'll take care of these kids. Okay? Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Shane is so positive Ashlyn's baby belongs to another man. I've seen Ashlyn's shoe prints on the back of our windshield. He moved back in with his mother. Footprints on the window in the car? His mother says Shane has never lied to her. Twice. And the DNA test will determine the fate of everyone involved. I'm done. I'm done. What can I do? the father of these three young adults a dramatic hour of Mari continues everyone this is Ashlyn welcome Ashlyn to the show now Ashlyn is madly in love with her boyfriend of two years Shane but the future of their relationship depends on two things it depends on a lie detector test which we gave Ashlyn and a paternity test now, Shane accuses Ashlyn of secretly cheating on him and is now denying their seven-month-old son, Micah. Oh. This family's in a state of turmoil. Ashlyn believes the only way to put an end to Shane's suspicion is to uncover the truth. Here's a glimpse of Shane's side of the story. My relationship with Ashlyn happened way too fast. One minute we was dating, and the next minute she was pregnant. Even though I had my doubts, I still wanted to be a family with her. But then all her dirty little secrets started coming out. One day I walked into the garage and I found washcloths that smelled just like sex. And I found stains on our TV and even sex lube on our door handles. Ashlyn's friend told me that she was having sex with her own husband. I almost lost my mind when I seen Ashlyn's shoe prints on the back of our windshield. I fully believe she was having sex with another man. It makes me sick to my stomach that I've been wasting two years of my life on her. I got seven different kids with two other women. I take care of my responsibility. And if I find out Mike is not my child, it's a wrap and the relationship is officially over. So, did that slip by you or did you hear that he had seven other kids <laughs> who he says he's in their lives? Now, apparently it's gotten so bad that Shane moved out. And now Shane lives with his mother, Carla, Ooh, wow. who's here today, too, because somehow Carla believes you're cheating, too, Ashlyn. Yeah. You know that? Footprints yeah. on the window in the car? No, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. I have three children. I have twin four-year-old boys. And I, I have Micah, and I have Shane, and I take care of all of them. And I even took care of his two youngest kids, too, while I was pregnant with our son. You're so sure of yourself, you took a lie detector test, and we're yeah. going to have the results. Yeah. Okay. Now, when did Shane start to deny the baby? I don't know. Like, probably in a couple, when he was a couple months old. One of your friends told him that you had sex. Yeah. Okay, when we were together for only a couple months... Um, he came to me and told me that he was talking to my best friend. Oh, and the drama queen. they were Come talking on. about having With sex. With the drama. Come on, Ashlyn. You know you are full of drama. You turn the waterworks off and on like a faucet. One minute you're talking to me on the phone, 
screaming and hollering. Okay. And the next minute, so we're you... going to bring Shane and his mom out here. Okay, here she is, Carla and Shane. Drama, drama, drama. Why are you so all over her? Why am I all over her? This is my baby. I brought this man in the world. Really? I did not bring him in the world for her to take him out, Maury. Did you bring him in the world to have eight children? Hey, my sons are proud daddy. My, my sons are proud daddy, and I am an evolved grandmother. Do you love her? Yeah, I love her. You want to be with her? Yeah. Really? If she gets some help. She needs some help. You're the one help. that needs the damn help, Shane. You do. You need some help. Hey! Do you want to be, you want to be Micah's father? You want to be Micah's father? He knows he's Micah's father. Yeah, I want to be his father. He better be. I know that much. He better be Micah's father. Oh, I'm not even worried about it. By the way, she took a lie detector test to get you back in her house. Truth. We asked you the day that Shane found soiled washcloths in the house. Was it from you having sexual intercourse with another man? You said no. The lie detector determined. Don't go away because the lie detector results and the DNA results are next. I'm done. I'm done. What can I do? Is Greg the father of these three young adults? A dramatic hour of Mari continues. My relationship with Ashton happened way too fast. One minute we was dating, and the next minute she was pregnant. Then all her dirty little secrets started coming out. And if I find out Micah's not my child, it's a wrap, and the relationship is officially over. You want to be Micah's father? He knows he's Micah's father. Yeah, I want to be Everybody his father. He better be. She took a lie detector test to get yeah. you back in her house. We asked you the day that Shane found soiled washcloths in the house. Was it from you having sexual intercourse with another man? You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. I told you! I told you! Yeah! asked you We asked you during your relationship with Shane. I told you! During your relationship with Shane, have you ever posted ads on Craigslist yes. looking for sexual encounters? Yes, she did. You said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. I'm done. I'm done. During the relationship with Shane, did she ever have sexual intercourse with another man? She said no. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Interested in whether you're the father of this child, okay? That to me is the most important it thing. Is. Yeah. It is. The seven month old Micah Shane, you are the father. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Take Jesus. care of that boy. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. The DNA results just came in. You are the father. And now the emotions are coming out backstage. Man, I love them kids. I've been there with them kids. But you kept denying them. You kept denying them. Of course. What am I supposed to do? Is Greg the father of these three young adults? A dramatic hour of Mari continues. Earlier, we all met Paulette and her former lover, Antonio. He denies your two. And I'm tired. I'm sick of it. After dealing with tremendous loss. You got pregnant with twins. They died. Yes. You got pregnant with, with triplets. triplets they, they died. Yes. Paulette's now dealing with raising two children by herself, <laughs> including caring for one child with cerebral palsy. Look at this on your forehead. Look at your forehead. Man, I, Junior, yeah. I don't see it. I don't see it. Look at that. 
The DNA test proved that Antonio has been completely wrong. You are the father. You are the father. After the show with executive producer Paul Fallhaber. You're upset right now. What's going on? Why are you so upset? Emotions came out. I know, but I love you. You know what I mean? But, I don't know. They just seen it. This is deep for you. This is deep for you. Yeah, it's, man, I love them kids. They've been there with them kids. But you kept denying them. You kept denying them. Of course. What am I supposed to do? Kept denying them. You're sticking with all these different dudes. It don't matter. You got people. So how are you guys going to move forward from this moment on? I mean, I, I just want you to take care of his kids. And, and that, all I want her to do no is give us that bomb. Right right now, right now. It's over. It's over. It looks like these two will not be together again as a couple. You know you're really angry with him, but do you still want to be with him? No, I don't. I'm done. I am done. done with me. Even though Antonio admits he's still in love with Paulette. I ain't gonna be loud. Yes, I do love her. That's my first kid's mother right there. You're mad enough to admit it. Yeah, she came. She came. I want to thank all of my guests for joining me today. I want to thank everybody across the country and around the world who watches The Maury Show. I want to thank my live studio audience. Thank you. Until next time, America, thank you.